Uh, I pronounced it the elvish way. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Brian, what is up? Not much. How's it going over there? Yeah, yeah, it's going good. It's going good. I'm ready to, uh, to get started today. Start the new week. Get all these shows on the go. So, um... There's like, an ominous wind picking up here. It's blowing through my office right now, so... Auspicious. <laughs> it's a sign. Um, so I guess we should go around and remind ourselves who we are and who we're playing tonight. So let's start over the far right, just to spice things up a bit. So David, what's up? Um, yeah, so, yep, yeah, just finding the button. Hi folks. <laughs> I'm SP, it's overrated, David. Um, I will be playing Lucy and Kane, um, who is a kind of steampunk cyborg hunter. So he's got a cybernetic eye, he's got a rifle that carries multiple types of ammunition. Yeah, given we're now level two, we've um, added some types of ammunition that you guys. So hopefully we'll see that in, in game. And, and our stream tonight is sponsored by Cadbury. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to try this. You get hold Other of this stuff. chocolates it are available. God, it really uh, is. Other chocolates are available. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Tiger? Uh, all right then. So, Sam, how are you? Good. Um, I'm tired <clears throat> still. Um, so I am playing Sintra. Um, she has like, forgot what it was called. A symbion, right? Symbiote. Yeah. Symbiote. <laughs> Symbiote. Symbi um, she likes to kill things. That's what I've noticed so far with her. She's pretty um, brutal. This going to be fun. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Uh, Sid, how are you? I'm good. Good. And who are you playing tonight? I'm playing Leah, the cyborg uh, girl. She was uh, like a military weapon tester, and there's an accident. And so she was saved by technology, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool, and finally, I'm playing Ambrose, the uh, old uh, six-year-old hippie from the 60s. He's a druid, he's got a stag, he's got a cat, he can now turn into a bear and a wolf, apparently. So he's, he's having good times, fun times. He had his leg chopped off, but we're all good. We're all good now. <laughs> I mean, now I can turn into a bear, so I mean, you could, like, cut my legs off and it would be fine, I guess. So, um, <laughs> we should get into the recap of, of what happened previously, then. So, Brian, I guess you're in the, you're in the know here. Okay, well, so, um, yeah, so last game we had, uh, we kind of had a lot of ground that we covered, I was thinking, as I was writing up the, uh, the recap for the website. Um, but at a high level, I guess what happened was um, the uh, elven, uh, female elven wolf rider that uh, was spotted in session one, um, what, you know, we opened with uh, Ambrose trying to, tra you know, sort of chase her down, yeah. seemed to have something of a, uh, a druid crush, as it were. Druid bonus for her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, uh, but... Uh, Lucian helped to sort of, uh, you know, redirect that, and so they end up finding some other tracks, led to uh, a, a sleeping uh, barbarian uh, sort of napping under a tree, which is, since Sam is so tired, she can relate to her character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, they, uh, you know, they, after a sort of tense moment, you know, she agreed to help them on their hunt of this mythical beast that they were on the trail of. Um, they hadn't really found out what it was exactly. And then uh, not too long after that, they sort of crossed a large clearing uh, where there was a swamp and uh, with complete stealth, no, you know, unbeknownst to the party, uh, this, this huge creature sort of swooped down and tackled uh, Sam's character into the swamp. And it turned out to be like a sort of prehistoric looking tiger with tusks and spikes and it also had wings and um anyway things didn't look too good for the party as the uh thing had sort of loud this ferocious roar and uh you know people were scrambling and then all of a sudden out of nowhere karen from out of um, nowhere <laughs> karen what happened will tell us what karen did karen went ham <laughs> Karen Rex. She wrote like a 52? 60, 61. 60, 61, fuck me. Yeah, she wrote like a 61. 
Uh, and uh, she uh, she destroyed this thing. One hit. <laughs> Touch it, get hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is uh, for the record, uh, for anyone who's playing along, playing the home game about the actual game system, Open Legend, there is, uh, that is near the upper limit of what I've seen in all of my testing. The highest roll I've ever seen is a 66. Will rolled a 61, and then an hour later rolled a 62. So, uh, it. <laughs> top of the leaderboard for greatest, uh, you know. <laughs> Just greatest, you can finish there. You can. Oh my god. <laughs> Just greatest. Yeah. Anyway, so they, they finally killed this thing. Um, it, uh, they, they, it did have, um, they only fought it for a short period of time, but they noticed that it had these, these strange red glowing eyes. It looked like it was possessed or something like that. Uh, in the fight, Ambrose got knocked off of his stag into the swampy water. And then they found out after about an hour later, um, he, after they were sort of had butchered this animal and everything, um, he began to get symptoms like dizziness and vomiting and that sort of thing. And, they found a snake bite on his foot where um, he had fallen into the water and been bitten by some sort of water snake. Um, at the same time, they were held at bow point by a, uh, an elf, a native elf, who appeared to have some sort of magical ability with her bow as it, was, it had sort of cold and frost energy dancing along the shaft of the arrow. And um, <clears throat> so these... This is kind of a crazy thing where these things are both happening at the same time. David's character is trying to parlay with the native elf, and the others are trying to tend to Ambrose, Will's character. And then what happens? So then they sort of eventually convince them to help Will's character sort of go back to their, their main village. And uh, along the way, he starts to get worse and worse, and uh, eventually just falls unconscious off of his stag, and uh, Leah jumps into action, proactive, you know, as she is. Tell us what, tell us what you did. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so let's just get into the story. Okay, so there was a viewer decision. So <laughs> was like, everybody believes in her healing powers and everyone's going to chill out. No, <laughs> that didn't, that's not right. <laughs> that was the viewer decision. Are we, are we throwing the viewers under the bus right now? I'm yeah, curious. Well, you're attacking our chat, Sydney? Will. Jesus Christ, no, I'm sorry about that. No, we're throwing straight at Will is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so. We got some PJ Sullivan chat. So, so anyway, uh, so long story short, she... <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of salt. Just a wall of salt. <laughs> we need to build a wall, chat. We need a wall of salt. <laughs> um... <laughs> So what we wanted to say. Uh, so yeah, so she uh, she springs into action and uh, pulls out the circular saw and begins to cut off Will's infected foot, uh, Ambrose's infected foot, and um, he wakes up right in the middle of it uh, with his foot halfway amputated <laughs> and uh, howling in pain. Um, but the strange thing was that he actually no longer felt the symptoms of the poison, which uh, was unusual as he woke up. And then he rolls the, the, the legendary 62 to heal his own foot. <laughs> and uh, probably much less than a 62, and I would have had to keep that foot amputated partially. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> you can't the let that stand with such a high roll. So anyway, they uh, continue on the path, headed back towards this village, and uh, ultimately ran to a very dark, sort of foggy, misty area, and uh, spotted some glowing red eyes peering back at them from the uh, from the darkness and the fog. And at the same time, um, these strange vine-like tentacles begin to sort of wrap up around their legs from the ground in the sort of already marshy, wet undergrowth. And uh, some characters took, took damage and actually felt as if their souls were being siphoned directly out of them. 
Um, you know, and so that's kind of where we left off last session. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a few things before we dive into this one. If you haven't followed, then hit that follow button and join us. Uh, we are here five nights a week, nine shows every single week, a 24-hour stream every single month coming up in a few weeks' time. Hot exclusives to be dropped soon. <laughs> Um, if you haven't retweeted, you can. At 25 retweets, you get to decide what happens in our game, which is pretty exciting. So you can throw uh, anything uh, towards us and we'll just have to roll with it. Uh, and of course, uh, you can affect our game via Donorinos. Uh, they're a little bit different for Open Legend. Uh, Advantage works a bit differently, so uh, make sure you, uh, you drop a message in chat before you uh, spend, uh, spend all your hard-earned gold. But um, other than that, I guess we should uh, continue onwards with our adventure. So take All me right. away, Bran. Take me away to a land far away. <laughs> like, like you promised you would. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, let's have everybody roll initiative since we're already in combat, but we just didn't really uh, do that. Just didn't even know. It was that we're feeling. Combat? Yeah, <laughs> with a tentacle creature. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kind of good reaches. <laughs> Damn it. Been there before. <laughs> Send that enter. All right, let's... Um... <clears throat> Let's see, where's my character? Look. Here it is. What's your machine here? Agility. Oh, Agility. It, oh, oh, that one. That okay. thing. Yeah. That one. <laughs> I want that one. 21. All right, we've got uh, Lee is on a 20, Senra is on a 12, Woohoo! Ambrose is on a... Tentacle 12. creature? Lucky me, I'm not in this fight, that wouldn't end well. That says, that says a lot about you, Sue. Uh, I want to find the, the, the hentai quote from Lee. It's, there we go. <laughs> 93. All right, um, so let's see, I will roll. So what does this creature look like again? Okay, so one thing that is worth noting that? is that um, the... Uh, there we go. So <clears throat> to remind us of one important detail here, um, David's character had this special sight mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when he was trying to spot this creature, he found that when he switched back and forth between the sort of infrared or whatever you want to call this, like heat sensing, blind sight mode, it was like the creature appeared and disappeared. And so the eyes, these sort of glowing red eyes, they kind of appeared and then disappeared as he switched back and forth. And that was kind of the cliffhanger we left off on. So uh, it is David's turn first anyway. So you can uh, tell me what you're doing there. Um. So I think I will move myself back a little bit. Yeah. And then I'm going to shoot this one here. Okay. With the rifle. All right. So this is the map for you folks. Um, possibly not a nice 14. Uh, unfortunately, uh, no dice as you uh, uh, fail to uh, sort of uh, hit the thing just just sort of barely goes wide. Um, your shot. Um, anything else that you're doing? Um, no, that'll do for me. Okay. What's up, Squidgey? Ambrose is up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see how much hentai is enough hentai. <laughs> Three years <laughs> is, is enough, and uh, I think plus being Asian. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, so I'm going to command the. Stag. No, I'm gonna command the cat Karen uh, to attack. And I, uh, I Karen say, does have a pretty good record. F f Karen's <laughs> pretty much, uh, you know, most valuable player at this point. She's, uh, <laughs> she, yeah. she's, uh, she brings the most to the team. So yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sub her on, uh, and I say, <laughs> Karen, go forth and prosper. And then she's gonna <laughs> do her thing. <laughs> she's gonna do what Karen does best. Oh, I need to uh, check the Discord link. So can I roll for Karen this turn, or do I have to wait until her turn? I forget. Uh, no, she can just act on your turn, just to keep it simple. Maybe sometimes we'll have to roll, but we don't want to do that usually. Sure. So, so Karen's 
thingy is a d10. Alright. Alright, Karen. I can do this. Come on, babe. 11. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I'll right. Slow out the gates. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Karen uh, leaps into the fray, uh, and unfortunately, uh, the, she just, the thing, she sort of like strikes into the heart of the thing, and so as she gets closer, um, well, you guys don't have any, eh, well, no, there's, there's some shadowy illumination, but again, it's a little tough to see with the fog, but it almost looks as if the, uh, in the, as if in the picture, um, which we should uh, show for the sake of viewers, etc. What's up, Sophie? Uh, <clears throat> I haven't had to go do errands. It sucks, man. Don't do errands. What? What happened? Just, uh, just, just chilling. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, these tentacles. <laughs> oh, wow. These some next level uh, tentacles. <laughs> but what you see as you guys sort of, uh, you know, focus in and hone, you know, sort of. Really focus on the tentacles. <laughs> 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 uh, um, but it, it looks like the red eyes are in an actual tree, and then the, the vines or tentacles almost look like their uh, branches or vines that sort of extend from the tree itself. So Karen sort of comes up and swipes at this tree, but, uh, you know, she just sort of strikes the trunk to no avail. Um, who's up next? We got uh, Leah is up next. Okay. Legendary Leah. <laughs> uh, can I, like, create some sort of light source to have over there so we can see through the fog better? Like, kind of get a better idea of what we're dealing with? Yeah, like a flame torch? So there's a boon called light, or, or I think it's called light. Anyway, it's definitely accessible with the energy uh, attribute which you have, so you just need yeah. to roll energy to see if you can invoke it. Cool. There's a lot of tentacles in that picture, but I thought you'd like it. <laughs> yeah, we got Twitter man, we got the tweeters. 23? 23. Okay. Um, so that's definitely a success. So you managed to uh, illuminate the area. Um, so that's great. You guys uh, uh, can see more clearly. And uh, again, it, it looks like what you see, you know, in the image that I shared there. Uh, so that's what we're looking at. And. Um, Let's see, what is the, is there a, hold on a second here, I'm gonna look up the light boon. Boon is such a good word. <laughs> boon. It's, it's most boonular. It's boonacious. Uh, yeah, okay, well you're in luck. What is, I made, what I made, is the boon shoot? <laughs> I made the light boon because Summoning up magical light seems like something that you don't want to spend your whole turn on. So it is a minor action to invoke that moon, so you can still use your other action to attack or something like that. Do it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Then... Alright, so then I'll... Uh... Throw something... <laughs> Of a, like a fireball sort, <laughs> like just like bazooka the shit. Okay, so the um, so what you want to do if you want to, so the only trouble here is that um, if you want to, you can do a multi-target attack and you'll take disadvantage too. You can do like a double missile, like fireball thing, like and shoot two of these guys if you wanted to theoretically. Um, you know, that's an option, or if you're just talking about doing a single attack, then that's just the usual. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just do, I'll just do a single one. I'm not fancy. Okay, you're not fancy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're low, low maintenance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chill grill. Low, low maintenance bazooka attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's eco-friendly. 36. <laughs> Thanks so much, Whoa. dude. Crimson Cali for following. Welcome, my friend, to the adventure. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks for following. 36. Wow. 36. Double explosions on those sixes. Beautiful. Um, so you strike this creature, and um, 
it looks like it would, you know, on a, it, <clears throat> hmm. if it were like some sort of natural animal, it probably would have killed it. However, this thing is just like this sort of evil, twisted, dark tree with glowing eyes. And so unfortunately it seems fairly resilient, but uh, you definitely blast Ooh, really? like a huge chunk out of the side of this thing's trunk. And uh, you can see it sort of like, you know, its eyes sort of come to bear on you. It, it, it's silent, it makes no noise, which is actually very creepy. And uh, it's sort of like, its gaze comes to rest on you. It seems that um, you're in for it as it were. Uh, Thanks so much to Mogwai Juice for following. Welcome, my friend, to the adventure. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Um, so, what do you want to do there, uh, Sydney? Uh, you done with your turn? You got to move? Did you already move? Can, can, is there anybody I can like hide behind? Anybody? <laughs> anything? Well, you do have my Gimli. stag. You have, um, <laughs> We well, have her right here. This is the female archer. Um, you can hide behind her. You can hide behind yeah. the bag. You know. No, I don't trust this. Yeah, you don't trust this. I would just kick you in the face. Not, yeah, I feel like I would fuck you die. Like... For anyone who wasn't here or forgot, the uh, the stag and the panther tried to attack Leah. Um, well, last. Like on. They just standed up there. Yeah. Defend their master. Oh my god. <laughs> So, uh, next up, do. yeah, you sometimes you just gotta... You gotta kill the, the robot girl. <clears throat> it was a viewer decision. It was a viewer decision. It was a viewer decision. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they all say. Oh my no, no, no. Look, look, you got well, to, be, to be fair, uh, Sydney, you were trying to chop his foot off before the viewer decision. <laughs> <laughs> and he was resisting it. The new decision was he had to you go. You gave him the option. <laughs> I was totally going to say, you got to own that. I mean, it was, that was like, if I were you, I would have totally cut Will's foot off. So don't, let's not, you know. I've always dreamed of cutting Will's foot off. It's, one of, it's one of our main fetishes, is cutting <laughs> so like, my foot off. Right? <laughs> Just, you know, not in game. Outside of game, fine. But in character. <laughs> got to play a character. Do you know? Don't bring that into. <laughs> Just, I'm talking of cutting things off. I really remember it is Games of Thrones tonight, so yeah. you know, to cutting true. things off. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Topical. All Topical right. debate. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, let's see. These guys are going to go ahead. And uh, so, what happens is. Um, you see, like, the, the tentacles and vines that are coming off of this creature, and they're sort of like, they begin to, like, writhe, and so they sort of stir up, and they, they, the ones under your feet, they continue to sort of wrap around your legs, crawling up your legs as they entwine you. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, <clears throat> everybody except for the mysterious hooded stranger, who is, uh, this character down here. Um, everybody else is in the area as uh, these vines uh, attack for 15 against your um, evasion, uh, or no, your uh, toughness. So, uh, does anybody take damage 15 or less for your toughness? Yeah. Um, I'm dead on 15, so do yeah. I take it on my own? Uh, no, no, oh, no. Uh, no, no. Is it evasion or toughness? Toughness. Oh, man, I'm good. All right. Good to go. They can't get around these thick thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> that's great. All right. And then um, the other, so you see these other eyes sort of peering back at you as uh, this other creature looks toward you guys with malice and hatred. And uh, even more vines begin to sort of wrap around and um, 29, oh boy. They can go around the thighs, man. Uh, so I don't know about, I don't know about your thighs. Thick thighs, 29. I don't think it's 29. <laughs> just, just stay under the neck, I'm okay with that. All right. Um, so that's their, that's their go. And next up is Senra. So what happens to the 29? 29 versus your toughness. So are you 
got, is anybody, uh, I'm assuming people are uh, hurt there, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe we'll take, uh, what, so if I've got toughness 15, that would be 14 points of damage. <laughs> yeah. Minus Which is armor, armor, right? Yeah. Okay, so I take some down to <clears throat> seven. Sorry. Dang <laughs> it. The vines, this is the RP, just call them tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> You've been around here a while, but I'm so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Center, what are you up to? Um, um. Who is winning, Leech asks. Uh, the tentacles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's my mom asking. <laughs> it was close. We win. <laughs> like every time I get home from playing D and D, my mom is like, "Did you win? Did you win the game?" <laughs> so yeah, I got hit pretty hard. Let's see here. Twenty nine, so eight. Yep. Uh, your it's your turn also. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um. So flies. they're touching me, so I'm getting my mall out, and yep. I'm gonna hit it. Go for it. Is it my? Yes. Okay. Negotiate with the tentacles. I don't know if that's gonna work, Leech. <laughs> Whoa! I'll give it a go then. Hello 43. there. 43! So Hello. I have to roll another d20, right? Uh, yeah, in case you roll higher than a 16, yep. Uh, so it's... They will see reason. Yeah. Hopefully. They will see reason. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, Damn. that's higher than the 16. Oh, Damn! On. What the hell? What is that score? That is... <laughs> my, my 56 <laughs> plus, uh, what, 63? <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Maths. Oh. It's maths damage. I know how to do it again, right? <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. I thought you need to do it again against that one. <laughs> Just keep doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, do I keep wrong? <laughs> so, I did not like them touching me. <laughs> at all. <laughs> Actually, yeah, technically, with the brutal attack, does she need to roll another d20 in case this third 16? Yeah, no, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. We're, we're good. We've already got all the dice we need, but I think it's higher still. So it, it's it's like instead of sixteen, we have thir we have thirty six in its place. So like forty three minus the sixteen plus <laughs> it's good to be at a computer right now. So um, plus thirty six. Yeah, oh, you're right. It's sixty three. Okay. Sixty three. Yeah. But what? Yeah. But what I was saying was the. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. No, you're right. I mean, you're right. The, the, you don't need to roll again the d twenty. So yeah, sixty three. Yeah. All right. So new high score. It's like 61, yeah, 62, 63. 64. <laughs> um, you do manage to uh, strike the creature. We're going to, it would be a little weird if you were just to stay in place. So we're just going to say you move here because it doesn't make sense if you were to just attack from there. And uh, anyway, uh, you, you slender the thing right through the trunk and it just, you just see w just wood and splinters go, uh, sort of flying all over as the light with the red uh, baleful eyes just sort of go out. Um, so unfortunately there's there's another one there, uh, but you definitely killed that one. So Kane, it's your go. Um, Call for the tentacles uh, and see reasons to keep it. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so I will shoot at um, this one here. Yeah. Got him. Welcome. Thank you so much to Leech the Clown for following. Welcome, Zick Clown. Uh, uh, 25. You're a gentleman with scholars. Okay, 25. Alright, uh, on the 25, you definitely uh, do damage to the creature. And. Uh, five points of damage. Yes. It's blinded. Alright, it's blinded. That doesn't doesn't work well for, for me, David. When your tentacles uh, are blinded. When your tentacles are blinded. Feels bad, man, right. for DM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happens is, um, all right, so that's that. Ambrose's go. <clears throat> all right, my turn. Uh, who looks the most injured? Because I know we've just taken a shit of damage. Well, she just she just destroyed this thing in one hit, sundered it to pieces. No, and... sorry, I mean amongst um, uh, player characters. Oh, so, uh, oh we've just oh, taken yeah, a bunch but... of. Uh, I've got eight hit points left, but I'd imagine other people are maybe lower than that. So I'm, I'm like at 
917. Alright, so... I have some boons to give you all. <laughs> I have many boons for you. Uh, so I can invoke the heal boon as a move action instead of a normal action. Uh, and I have advantage one when rolling to invoke my heal boon. So... I have many boons for you. So... Um... I... Who am I closest to? Who's this one? Which one? Oh, uh, yeah. that's Leah. Alright, <laughs> seeing as you're next to me, I will heal you. <laughs> oh! With my healing magics. With my Thanks. boons. Uh, so, advantage one, I've got creation, so... <laughs> D8, so I need to do 2D8. I forget mm. what advantage is. I know it's not key blows. 2D6. Uh, the, the ceiling, there's the ceiling, so 2D6 is the max until you get uh, the 6th level. So. Okay, so 2D6. Yes. Wait. Uh, 13 on my booning. <laughs> 13, okay. Um, so that is uh, D4. So that's power level 1, and then you heal D4. So you roll D4. D4, <clears throat> you heal 2. Alright. <laughs> I, uh, I place a hand up uh, next to you and the leaves go on you. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. take this. Uh, and then I'm going to tell the stag. I'm going to command the stag to go and attack this one. Alright, go now, for it. One, two, three, four, five, and then stag attack. Four plus D8. My three, so nineteen for the stack. Okay. Uh, so yeah, again, that does uh, it does some damage. Not enough to uh, take it down, but uh, your your stag drives the horns straight into the trunk of the tree, and some splinters sort of uh, break off the side of the thing. Nice. As, uh, it, it's partially damaged. Um, Leah, it's your turn. I think it might be. Do Karen does Karen attack at this point? Yeah, Karen can attack. That's fine. Sure. Uh, so, Karen rolled 20. In fact, yes. Karen should come over here and do that. <laughs> yes. All right, 20. Okay. Um, same thing. Uh, takes another chunk out of it, uh, but uh, it's still there. And then uh, Stag it's there. should be a t-shirt. Oh, by the way, if you folks... Right, I'm wearing the new Karen Roleplay t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> you can grab your copy. Your yeah, copy. You your own color. <laughs> It's Just incredible. print it out, you're good. Mm -hmm. You could draw your own on your own t-shirt if you want, that'd be fine. <laughs> I, saw this I saw this virtual reality thing where it was an office, and you could like put a stapler on the copy machine and it would spit out a stapler. Out of the <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. <clears throat> so, alright, so it's there go. Um, so this one is going to focus in on Let's see. Um, I guess kind of we'll focus on Senra here. I think. Why not? The, the back just looks yeah. red, cocky. Twenty eight. Get that booty shot. Oh no. <laughs> the twenty eight there, Senra. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Are you down? I no, did, yeah. I'm not down. I'm like at twelve health. So hold on. Twenty eight, you said. So. Yeah, twenty eight. Minus seven, so five. Okay. Wow. Ha. Right. I'm still um, kicking and screaming, guys. What does the and, inside uh, of the shirt look like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a boon, come on. <laughs> boon me, guys. Guys, can you just give a big boon? <laughs> so you guys see, like, these te as these tentacles wrap around and sort of begin to suck the life out of Senra, you can see that... Uh, the creature itself sort of begins to regenerate as the the, the sort of broken pieces in its uh, wood, you know, bark and the side of it sort of mend back together as it seems to be uh, uh, a vampiric fashion, drawing the life out of out of our heroes here. Uh, and then it is your go, Senra. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna boom myself. Hello. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom it up. Right. So you just roll a d20 for boon? Um, well, you have... Did you have boon focus? No, you don't. I have boon regeneration focus. Yeah, so then you you can you automatically do it, but you just roll d4 to see how much you heal. Auto oh, boon. okay. It's an exploding d4. I need to order a boon, guys. Auto boon initiating. 
D4 and then an explanation mark, right? Yep, two explanation marks. <clears throat> So mm -hmm. Did I do it right? Yes, three. I got three. Right. You heal three. I'm at eight. Yes. I'm so, eight. I guess, is anybody nearby? No, not really. Okay, so no one really sees the strange thing that happens with their character. That's fine. Uh, or no, no, you actually, you, you got to attack, right? So you have to move here. Oh. I would assume. This one's dead, the one up here, by the way. Oh, yeah, I see the X, kind of. Um, <laughs> So you said that was just a extra bonus attack, so I have to actually attack now. Uh, yeah, that's a that's just your okay. that's your minor. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the quick cheeky boon, and now you're onto the full. Well, just a quick question, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, what did the Elven Archer do last turn? Where did what? What did the Elven Archer do last turn? Uh oh, good point. Uh, let me roll for her. Oh, hey. Cheeky nah. boon in the corner, I think. <laughs> you sitting there watching? Side boon. Yeah, watching. <laughs> like all the booning that's going on. R revving up the boonitude levels. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you can roll off. So I guess I'll roll for her there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so she, uh, she strikes it with like a flaming arrow that looks like it's aimed at trying to ignite this creature. Uh, unfortunately, uh, does not succeed. And uh, what do you got there, uh, Senra, for your attack? <laughs> All right. I did nothing. Uh, I was right. like, oh, I thought you needed a tattoo. I was just going to have something for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, you swing your maul, and um, you get. Uh, we haven't. I feel like things are getting a little bit, uh, we need to spice them up a little bit here. So your maul actually gets, uh, you know, sort of lodged in the vines as you sort of take a really wide swing. And so you have disadvantage on your next attack. Um, and the, who's up? Lucian Kane is up. Right. Um, what are the two at the back doing? Where are the what? What are the um, two? Of, uh, they the, two tentacles. Got yeah, so there was only there. ever I I um I misplaced it on the map, so that there were two that I moved I removed because there there were. Oh. Yeah. Um, Can I shoot at the ones that are engaged, or do I need to move a little bit closer? Sort of. Uh, uh, I mean, the panther's obviously quite low down, yeah. but is the snake going to get in the way? You're going to shoot over the, the panther. That's fine. Sure. <laughs> I will um I will try and shoot the group then. Uh, beautiful. Um, so you, uh, you're, you're um, again, you you do f succeed in blinding the creature, um, and uh, what happens is you realize you, you one thing that you notice. So you do damage to the creature, but you're thinking about something because you have this sort of. Uh, I don't know what what is it? Is it is it a laser sight that blinds people when you target them or something like that? It's more like the some some of the shells just explode when they when they hit basically and blind. Okay, all right. So the creature should be blinded, um, but you just realize that as it sort of lashed out at uh, uh, who did it attack last? Sinra, I believe. Um, yeah. yeah, and the the, uh, the the glowing red eyes seem to be focused directly on Senra as it came around to attack her. And uh, you blind the creature a second time um, successfully, but uh, it doesn't seem disoriented as you would expect it to be. And it's actually um, very confusing. Uh, so you're not sure what to make of that. <clears throat> well, not, I mean, not all, I'm assuming not all creatures can be, you know, attacked using the sense of sight anyway, so. Yeah, um, it's probably so, and it's only a, it is only a fifty percent chance that the thing would be affected when it gets hit. Um, well, the idea is that like blinded is not it's a fifty percent chance that it misses, but it's still like you would get affected. Yeah, disoriented, and it does not seem to be disoriented in the way that you would expect it to be. So, right. <clears throat> um, who's up next? Next up is Ambrose. Yeah, I mean the only other thing that I'll say. Um, before I finish my turn is if, if um, I'll shout to people to try and use fire against it. Okay. A creature made out of wood. Yeah. Sounds good. Hey Firefly. Um, 
Why did I already have a fire stuff? Um, oh, I did have, I did put some points on energy, so I guess I could start a fire. Yep, you can do, you can make an energy attack if you yeah, want. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's make some, some energy attacks. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, good idea! And I, uh, like to fire in my hand and throw it out for an 18. 18, okay. Um, it sort of just barely, uh, you know, singes the creature, but it does do uh, just the slightest bit of damage. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, so, stag, I guess. Uh, 17 for stag. And nope, no dice. Oh, but I went off it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming back in. Karen needs to attack. So what if Karen, she has advantage one, so I need to not roll just a d10 there. I need to roll, um... Yeah, yeah. 2d10. Two two, yeah, 2d10 yeah, keep, keep one. Yeah. Because I keep it like, Yeah. Okay, let me find the thingy real quick. What's up, Firefly? Uh, let's bring that in here. Uh, 2d10 keep one? Or keep yeah. ice? I forget how. Is it keep H or keep one? Like a K1. K1, K1, yeah. K1 and KH1 are the same. Okay, cool. Uh, 16. 16, alright. So, unfortunately, 18, the, 17, uh, 16. the beasts do not, uh, do not manage to accomplish much this turn. Um, and, uh, Leah, it's your go. Okay. <clears throat> so, we've got... Okay, there's just one that's, like, still... Still, yeah. still yeah. kicking it. Yeah. Right. Still writhing. Yeah. Still booning. <laughs> okay, let's. It's booning me. Let's. <laughs> an energy attack on that one. <laughs> Go for it. Twenty. Okay. All right. So you, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of attack do you deliver here? I mean, I'm pretty much sticking with fire. Okay. All right. So again, the sort of flaming, like a sort of blowtorch, sort of uh, mechanic or an apparatus or something lights this thing up, but uh, it's not quite enough. Uh, as again, creature is singed but not completely taken out. Um, next up is the creatures go, as it will hone in on. Let's see, who's it going to attack now? We've got Kane Leah over here. Evan. So I think the creature will. Um, so many options. Yes, it's going to go for the ones that are immediately threatening it. So it's going to attack Senra and Karen. Ooh, to tentacle grab next. 31! <laughs> Man! Man! Alright, man, it's not a 63, okay? It's <laughs> <laughs> not a 63. Yeah. Look, it's a good. That's a good thing. Uh, so, did I did I get uh, Senra? You you're, are you down there? Where, where'd she go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some was sitting there quietly thinking, surely that was against the, the panther, not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's both the panther and Senra. Thirty oh, panther. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could count. Senra is uh, is down. All right. How many hit points did you have? Um, I had eight. Okay. And so I'm at a negative two. Yep. All right. And we don't do negatives. You're just at zero. So that's fine. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> um, and Karen should be down, I believe, right? Karen, I f is it against toughness or is it against evasion or resolve? That is versus toughness. Uh, in that case, she's down. <laughs> she's on zero. I'm just napping with it. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna go to bed, guys. We have fun, bye. All right, bye. don't forget the elf. Go on. The elf? Yes, thank you. Um, let's see. And possibly even the hooded stranger. Yeah, well, the hooded stranger seems to, uh, was sort of <laughs> trying try to hang back here, it seems. Um, but <laughs> he's seen this hentai before. He's not going anywhere near these tentacles. Oh, that's excellent. The uh, the, the elven uh, archer uh, lets fly another flaming arrow, and um, unfortunately, if it weren't for completely turning into a husk, 
your two companions here uh, and then sucking their life force out. The thing might be down, except uh, <laughs> it healed a whole bunch when it hit the two of you. And uh, it's still up. So next up is the stranger. He will uh, now jump into action finally as uh, he comes over and let's see. Some like cat. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a nap too. I'll put the cat there, so. <laughs> <laughs> TPK yeah, uh, He s- swings at this thing with a. Uh, he seems that under his uh, under his cloak he has like this, or well, no, we already saw it before, right? He has this large pole arm that he mm. leans heavily on as he's walking, and he brings this pole arm down to bear on the creature. And uh, is that a pole arm on your coat or? <laughs> Sandra is down, so next is Kane, Lucian Kane. <clears throat> Lucian Kane. Yeah, let's just try and finish this thing. You then. need to be playing a vampire, really, David, with a name like Lucian Kane. <laughs> yeah, Lucian. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be real here. What was the game? I, that was a great game. I like yeah, that. Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. White Wolf 1, it was a really, really good system. Yeah. Lucian Kane. Yeah, the guy who's like, like pull his mouth open and suck people's soul in, right? Yeah. In the video game? Yeah. Oh man. You can't crazy. say Lucy and Kane in like a happy, nice way, really, can you? Without sounding like you're evil. No, I don't think that you can. No. I, I'd say not. Um, alright. So, your, uh, your shot does not blind it this time, unfortunately. But uh, the blinding doesn't seem to be working as planned anyway. Um... And Ambrose, it's your go. Karen All right is- then. Um, let's see. Let's see. Who looks? Well, I know actually, cinder has gone down, so Who I looks should probably dead. Try, I should probably try and. Uh, and boot. So the way this the way this works, just to remind everybody of the danger, when if uh, if I attack a character who's down, then they have to roll a a roll with a with a challenge rating equal to half of the damage. So, um, and if they fail it, then they die. So they could die at any moment, but it depends on if that con- is contingent on me actually attacking a character that's down. So here's the, here's the dilemma for Will: Does he heal, yeah, um, Sendra okay. or the Panther? Who to boom? Whom to boom? To boom or not to boom? That is the question. That's the question. So. <laughs> Ah, uh, do I have a multi boon attack? Uh, no. Uh, well, actually, I can use and convert the heal boon as a move action instead of a normal action. So I'll, I'll heal Senra. Um, okay. So uh, with my creation. Um, and actually, it's a. I'm at advantage, so it's 2d6. Yep. So um, it is. Five, fuck me, two ones. <laughs> Alright. in a free. No, uh, no <laughs> Alright, no, no, no boon. Uh, so I'll try it again with my actual action. Okay. Um, to do that. Um, 19. Alright, so that is, um, what is your score with, uh, creation? My creation score, Brian, is a 3. Okay, so then you would roll, uh, d46, d8. So d8, and that's how much she heals. You heal for two. Two. <laughs> That's more than I had. Two more than you had before, true. <laughs> um, <laughs> how messed up is this DM? It's a choice between the power of life and a tentacle. <laughs> 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 uh, boon fizzle. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, well, I'm going to attack with the stag, uh, yeah. seeing as, as Karen is, uh, is, is down. So, stag attack for. Uh, oh, my god, too. <laughs> <laughs> A mighty two damage from my, <laughs> my stab. Don't worry, guys, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stag does 15. Alright, 15. Unfortunately, the stag's like his horns just kind of lock into the, the truss is thing and doesn't really uh, do anything notable. It goes into uh, the old horn boon, but it doesn't work out. The horn boon, yeah, that's. Yeah. that's... <laughs> Um, so who's up? Leah, here you go. Okay, what 
What can I do with like psychic? With what? Psychic damage. Like, can I like try to like use the psychic stuff to maybe like disorient this thing or? Sure, sure. Well, there, so one thing to keep in mind here is that so far, so just tactically speaking, it seems a little bit like a stalemate. But I want to make a comment on the mechanics, which is that at any point, you you know, David's character already has the built-in ability to try to blind the creature, right? And so that's that's a thing, but for some reason that's not working out. But there are many other like veins that could, you know, stun the creature or, you know, demoralize the creature. You know, all of these are options. And so, you know, if you guys want, you can you can do any of them at any point. So keep that in mind. Um, you know? So what it depends you could also do like you could do ongoing damage as a bane attack. And it's not too hard, and if you succeed, then it could light it on fire so that each turn it takes fire damage as you try to light it on fire. That's another, like, thought. Another that use of the boon. <laughs> Just another boon Brian has at Open Legends RPG. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try that thing then. Constant fire. I would, I would, do, con I would do the flamethrower effect on it if I were you. Yeah, happy Mother's Day, folks, to, to, to whom it right. is Mother's Day. It's not Mother's Day over here. No. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. You're trying so to... fuck him. Right. <laughs> okay. Wait, okay. David, is it Mother's Day over here? It's not. Good, thank fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if Will doesn't know, David, when is Mother's Day in the UK? Um, I don't know, but there's always <laughs> loads of reminders in the supermarkets full of ca yeah. cards. I you, usually, can't, you can't avoid it generally. I usually pick up a few hints, yeah. <laughs> I, I did not do a very good job. Uh, here, uh, oh, again, this, this thing has a very hardened sort of like, oh. um, you know, external bark, and so, you know, the flames are just not enough to catch it on fire, unfortunately. Um, do you want to move? hard external boom. <laughs> Rip. What? <laughs> All right, and then Imladril will go here. Oh, sorry, you don't know that. That's oh my god, this, oh, immersion ruined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she uh, again it strikes the thing with a flaming arrow, and these arrows just seem to like, you know, they're chipping away at it slowly, but it's 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 really hard going. Um, and then the creature goes and will attack. Ambrose and the Hooded Stranger. Oh, and finally, I missed. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Senra is down for now. Uh, or no, you healed, right? Uh, I'm at two. All right, you're at two. You're up. Yeah. <laughs> so, my first one is probably re booning. Hello. <laughs> exactly. And I rolled a two. The initial. All right. So I'm at four. four. Yep. So do I help heal the creature when I do this, or no? No, no, no. You, okay, you, it's just on like, myself with my... Uh, it assumes a single target. I would assume that given the backstory for how this works for your character, I would assume it almost always applies to you. Um, yeah. I need to work on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> probably um, what I'm thinking, it would make my skin tougher, and so that would be my armor more than what I have. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Leech. Uh, XP is overrated is actually David's real name, so that's why we've, we've got him up there. Is that where... Okay, so <laughs> we have to do disadvantage on my roll. Are you, are you doing multiple my... targets? No, um, I'm just targeting this stupid creature that killed me. Okay. Well, keep uh... <laughs> in mind a couple things. One, if you're yeah. wielding the mall, you get advantage one because it's a two handed weapon. Two, you get, um, we also have tactical advantage from being, having a roast nearby, so that's advantage two. And then one disadvantage from the thing that we talked about. So you're actually in total at advantage one. Advantage one, okay. Um, so. One extra die and the oh, Huh, so do our D20 exclamation mark, exclamation mark plus two D6 or three D6? Three D6 K2. 3d6 k2 after the exclamation marks 
Nah, no before. <laughs> so it's three <laughs> A2 and then two exclamation points. <laughs> Let's see if they did this right. Roll 20 is like, it's oh, nice. Fuck. What? <laughs> My I think gosh. I did it right. Rolls 58. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we did this right. Um... Oh, I'm so broken. What is going on? Everybody's rolling 60. This has never happened before. This game uh, is so broken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, uh, you managed to sort of destroy the creature. Uh, you just sunder. Your maul just comes and just splits the trunk of this tree right in half and you see the lights you know the dark uh or sorry the, the red glowing eyes just sort of go out flicker out as uh you swing through the thing um so what That's else do you get doing? back from life <laughs> man you guys are just lucky i'm not rolling any of these 58s <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, so so I'm not so guess, I'm going to guess that they don't have any loot, right? No, you don't. <laughs> They're trees. I mean, we could go through. We could go through the tentacles. I'm happy. Yeah, well, the tentacles seem to be connected to the, the the tree thing, so. Okay, I want to pick from the rubbish and get a toothpick. <laughs> uh, yep, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely done. So. Um, Thick. Let's see. A good one. So what? So what do you guys? Uh, so again, these these you just have these like all this rubble and the, like splinters and shards of these trees all over the place. Um, and uh, tell me what you guys are doing after. after the... <laughs> we have to go through <laughs> the tentacles. We can't go around. Them. <laughs> um, so for, for for those of us who took just normal damage, you recover it all at the end of combat, don't you? Yeah, that's correct. I guess we can however, love however, that a bit. There's one catch to that because my first attack did have lethal damage because I rolled a 30 something and it had a 14. So with that first attack, you guys would take lethal damage, unfortunately. All right, so I have some boonings for you all. Um, would all of it be would all of it be lethal damage or just a percentage? Just uh, no, all, all the all damage you take. Um, over your defense or whatever that score is. Yeah, yeah. so actually it's, we all took a fair amount of... Uh, yeah, damage. so I took 12 on that one. Yeah, I took 12 as well. Um, so, my boons. Uh, I can treat lethal damage as normal difficulty to heal naturally at a rate of one hit point per day per restoration level for all the characters that are in my company throughout the day. Alright, so, so you, you can accelerate the, uh, the recovery so all of you guys are, are injured. Um, I say, and... come close, we're all wounded. Group hug. <laughs> I'm still cuddling with your cat, apparently. Oh shit, Karen. <laughs> 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 so go ahead and um, roll your, roll just a general creation roll to apply healing, even though it'll be something that happens over the course of the day. Um, sure. As you're trying to bandage people up, I want to see... 27. Okay, so with the 27, um, as you're trying to mend people's wounds and stuff like that, you know, from like a narrative perspective, what happens is um, you notice that the creation magic, as you're sort of channeling it and trying to use it to sort of like, you know, weave together flesh and bone that are like damaged and that sort of thing, um, it almost feels like there's some strange disconnect where essentially you're, you know, you're intending, you know, with your channeling of this energy, you're intending for like this to go this way and like you're trying to repair this particular, I don't know, muscle or tissue or something like that. But it happens in like a sort of unpredictable way. And it's really, really strange. It's like surreal almost. Okay, uh, I, I say the energy is strange in this place. Do you sense it? <laughs> Don't put my hand on my face. I'm good. Everybody's, uh, everybody's totally... <laughs> I'm like, hmm, strange. I'll bring, like, Karen back up in the stag. Uh, Senra, as, as when he says this, you're reminded of, like, when you 
that when you first stood up after being knocked unconscious, um, when you first stood up and like sort of got your mall ready to sort of like swing at this creature, um, you remember this moment where it was almost like you had blacked out, like lost consciousness or something, except you were awake, but you didn't see the creature at first. And then like you, in this sort of disoriented moment, you found like, you found the creature ultimately and um, you, you know, you swung at it and, and killed it and everything. But there was this weird disconnect and it, it makes you think of that when he says this. <clears throat> was it illusion? Huh? What's this illusion? Hey, I don't know if this is an illusion. I'm not there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I love my knowledge. <laughs> you should not do this to me. <laughs> you roll perception, not knowledge. Or, or you oh, know, okay. if you're trying to resist illusion, or that's what you think, then you yeah. can roll will, or you will? can perception. So, so I'll do hour. perception. Perception's so better. On the hour, I remind you guys, if you're just uh, joining in, we've just fought some tentacles, we just killed some tentacles, and we're fight, figuring out what's going on here. If you're new and you haven't followed, hit that follow button and join us. And we are already at 13 retweets, guys, so it's an hour in already. 14 retweets, over, we're over halfway there to 25, where you guys get to decide anything which happens. So, exclamation point tweet, and you can join in on the farm. Do it. Do it. 22. Alright, 22. Um... So, with a 22, you, uh, yeah, you're, you, what happens is, so Will's character is trying to sort of like heal everybody, you know, and, and work to, uh, you know, like whatever wounds have happened, which are pretty severe, right? Because you guys took some lethal damage and stuff like that from these kind of things. coughing up blood, it's just a scratch. Yeah, well, as he's trying to like, mend these like sort of really deep gashes that are all over people's legs from the tentacles. I'm trying um, to boom you. You sort of like, you sort of start poking at your leg, like questioning your own sort of like experience or whatever this is. And um, when you, it takes a moment because you, you feel, in general, you feel like a pain, but then like as you sort of probe some more, eventually you get to this point where you kind of pierce the veil, and yes, in fact, it seems that it is illusionary because eventually the whole thing just sort of fades from your from your your perception. As you can see, your legs are entirely fine, and uh, you don't seem to be wounded at all. <clears throat> oh my god! Oh, so I throw a stick at Will's character, and I'm like, "Hey, it's fake, dummy." It's fake, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I look at it. This makes sense. Uh, as I kind of, as I look at her, as I'm like, previously with my bite, I was under the illusion that I was injured, but it turns out I wasn't at all. Now, similarly, none of us are injured. This is quite fascinating. Whatever is in this place, or whatever this creature excretes, it has infected us. And we are all. And that's illusion. why you don't go vegetarian. Eat the meat. <laughs> Excuse me, I did, I did bring you back from death. Now. It's so ask on this the, um, the, our elven companions, assuming they're real, um, have they seen this before? Um, Could you say that? Assuming you're real, have you seen this before? <laughs> assuming you're real. <laughs> I'm going out on a limb here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but she, sort of, she sort of like looks around and begins to survey and then she sort of Sort of like pinches herself or like just sort of like you know it's like messing with her face to try to like snap out of it and then like eventually um eventually everyone does because it would be really boring to just sit here and play a game rolling dice over and over no, um, i want to play that game so um... <laughs> <laughs> ultimately everybody gets free at one point or another and when she, when you ask her um she says uh in fact, yes, I have seen this kind of thing before. Um, if you didn't think you might want to mention it to us. <laughs> the problem is that you never know it's happening until you realize it's happening, right? Well, I suppose <laughs> Not so. a time for riddles. <laughs> Listen, this I'm is quite serious. I'm just going to walk around just poking myself. Okay, is this real? Is this real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, um, how do we know that you are real? 
Oh, it's poke with awesome. stick. I'm plenty real. <laughs> yeah, I poke her. <laughs> she, seems, she seems to be real from what you can tell. I poke the man as well. If you need to roll me a perception check. Sure. Uh, that is perception. Just, just aim it. Just aim it. Oh, sure. Sure. Imaginary credit for saving from an imaginary death, yeah. I want that credit, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we're basically playing D&D &D within the game, because like, we, we weren't actually injured. Uh, 12. All right. Um, Tentacle dreams. <laughs> uh, give, uh, I should have given you advantage because of something in particular, so roll 1d6 to... Yeah. We've all been dreaming about tentacles now. Quite fascinating as to why we have been, but... Uh, five. Alright, so that would be a 16, right? Yeah. Um, so, you spot... Um, it's just the slightest blip, but, um, you know, you're, you're like... Uh, you're one eye that can see sort of uh, alternate things. Um, well, blind sight or whatever, however we're quantifying that. Um, you spot like this sort of heat, um, like uh, mark on your sensor, right? And uh, it's sort of like off in the distance. So you guys are over here and this, this happens way up uh, over here. And uh, it's sort of like real difficult to see because it's like behind a tree and that sort of thing. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, dense foliage in between you and that spot. <laughs> Um, so I'll point out to the others that the that I may have seen something. What is it? On that tree. And David, your character, just to be clear, is like, uh, you know, <laughs> now that you're switching back, that I I didn't mean to do this to you. I hope this isn't too disappointing. But you you were going between the two when we left off at the end of last campaign or the last session, and yeah. where you left off was the one without blind sight. So I just had to kind of assume that. So. You know. <laughs> so, what do you see, Hunter? So, how uh, was it like human sized or was it animal sized? Was it larger? Um, well, you don't see the full form. It was like you kind of catch it just as it's like partially obscured by a, a large tree trunk there. Um, so I'll just say that I saw movement behind the tree then. Interesting. Were you these two, these fellows that we're following, these uh, the soldiers? Scouts, whatever. How do we know that they're still real, or that they haven't been affected by this too? They could have well been affected by it, but we know they're real because we were looking for them before we encountered any of this stuff. True, true, but then the tracks, they could be changed. It's worth thinking about. If we find them, then we should be on our guard and question them. They certainly could have been affected, which might explain what they were running from. Mm. I think the same. Are you, uh, and I, not to three. Shall we? Yeah, so let's, um, cautiously move towards the tree. Um, I'll go kind of this way if Will wants to, if Ambrose wants to go the other side. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll go the other way. I'll take, uh, I'll take the stag with me because Karen is, uh, is healing, I guess. Okay. Like um, so David, um, once you get around to the side there and uh, you have the advantage when it comes to being able to sight things because of your, you know, mind sight, um, and uh, you spot, like as you're sort of moving around, you, you see the figure sort of growing in, in the sense that you're seeing more of it as your angle, you know, changes. And um, <clears throat> what happens ultimately is you see like sort of hands waving as if like some, as if some sort of like incantation or something happening. And then, um, so it's happening simultaneous to you moving around and then all of a sudden it blips off of your radar and disappears. Guys, uh, I know this is important and everything, but Radiohead have just released a new album. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> All right, carry on. I'm just gonna spam, <laughs> spam links in chat. Go, go forth, my children. <laughs> oh, can I'm I'm 
I've been, over, we'll, I've been we'll streaming for another five hours before <laughs> I can buy, I can listen to it. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, carry, carry on. So what chat needs to announce? So in chat, basically, if you could go away to listen to it and just, and just wind Will up by the fact that he can't. <laughs> yeah, tell me. Yeah. Tell him how good it is. Tell me how good it is, guys. That's the best to... album ever. <laughs> Fun by me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I will say it looked like someone who was someone was maybe gesturing or casting, and then they vanished. I'll say that to Ambrose. Can you can you detect any um, any use of magic or any sure, aura that's been left I, behind by these? Um, can I? I guess not just perception. But <laughs> and I will uh, similarly as as he's doing that. I will flip through the spectrums that I can see because I remember before when we were at the point where the tracks went through the tree. Yeah. I was seeing some sort of trace of. Energy. So, see if I can spot anything as well as. Sure, sure, sure. So, some magical power I can roll for this one. Uh, so one. divination is the only attribute that would let you detect this kind of thing normally, a, but we can have. I took uh, eight point. Okay. I have eight well, point in divination. <laughs> it's a, it's a lot better than zero, which you can't do anything with. Yeah. So. I have and divination seven. And divination. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you're. Uh, it seems that your um, the the subtlety uh, at which things register due to your attunement is uh, is, is lower than, than you're able to detect, um, as uh, you, you do not in fact uh, detect anything. And uh, David, your character, um, so you can roll me a perception check. <clears throat> Yep. I don't see anything, Hunter. 28, okay. Um, so with a 28, you you do pick up some amount of so like a sort of residual aura, um, but it's like, it's kind of on the edge of the spectrum that you're capable of detecting, in fact. And um, the other thing that's of note is that the, the kind of, the, the nature of the aura that you saw before that you mentioned is different from this. Uh, you're sure of that because this is much more subtle and this is much more difficult for you. In fact, um, even with a 28, as you're sort of observing it, you, you're able to sort of watch it sort of fade until you can no longer see it. But you just catch sort of like the end of it or something like that. <laughs> so I'll switch my eye on to kind of like a sort of thermographic view and just have a look at sort of scout around the area, just yeah. to see if it's like a short range, because I know before it was yeah. quite a short range teleport, so maybe maybe this thing's got quite a, maybe it's like a blink rather than the teleport. Yeah, that's a great uh, thought. So I uh, roll perception again then. <clears throat> Not so good this time. And then for me, let's see. 14. I might have a, uh... Look around the hedgerows as well. I'll stun with it. You uh, you don't spot anything, unfortunately, uh, as you're sort of like scanning the area. Yeah. You can look too, as uh, Will. That's fine. You can roll as well. Um, uh, what? I've got to roll over twenty nine, I guess. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you also do not see anything. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, well, it seems whatever you saw is now gone, Hunter. Mm -hmm. um, we were planning to head towards this village before we got caught, sort of pulled sure. into this mist. Yeah. Should we continue on towards the Ooh. village? I suppose so. The elves might have some knowledge on these scouts that you're looking for. My people are welcoming and helpful at all times. <laughs> That's excellent. <clears throat> So, so um, I, I vote for continuing towards the village. So the uh, the elven archer that has been traveling with you guys sort of comes up to you, and uh, she sort of like was following after you guys, also trying to help spot um, whatever it was. But uh, when you guys sort of decide to turn around, she she says, um, <clears throat> "Yes, there's not. I don't know much about these people." Um, that you uh, 
that, that just attacked us here, but we did encounter something like this before. It seems like some sort of foul magic. Obviously, we this is all stuff that we know, um, but uh, I think their fate is somehow intertwined with, uh, you know, unusual happenings in this world. Have you, and um, she begins to roll me a learning check, Leah, and David, or sorry, uh, Leah and uh, Lucian. Um, she describes this thing that she found, which was some sort of emblem that they found on, um, apparently they, they captured one of these, and they, she describes them as having like these very dark, like some sort of hooded robes and um, this one particular symbol. So um, Leah, so your character, Sydney, has heard it's difficult because he describes these ruins and these inscriptions, and so you're not 100% sure, but you believe that this is like, it's a description that is similar to like a the symbol of a religious order. The religious order is called the Order of the Divine Harispects, and they are known back in Schlechtenberg as being like, um, they're these sort of doomsayers. Um, they're almost like prophets. And they sometimes make, they're sort of out of the public eye for the most part, but every once in a while, they will make some very grand and like um, uh, grandiose like prophecy about something that's going to happen. And they're very feared by the people in Schlechtenberg because they have, the, the claim is that they have 100% accuracy with, when they make these, these sort of prophetic pred predictions or whatever. <clears throat> so, speaking to her then, what's her name by the way, since we've been traveling over a world bit of time now? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, my name is uh, Imla Drill, um, and I think you said your name was Lucian, is that correct? Uh, yeah, so I introduced myself and um, the others to her, as, yeah. as we kind of group back. So yeah. these people you encountered before you, were they, did they also were they the ones that used this kind of um, this magic against you that made you feel you were being attacked? Yeah. When in reality, it was all an illusion. I didn't see the, the actual form of uh, this one here that you guys sort of spotted out of the corner of your eye, but if their capabilities are any indicator, I would say it has to be the same group. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. And is that group um, an elven group? or a human, well, sort of like a, a people from the other side group? Well, I think that there were definitely, we we had found um, in the previous encounter that we had with them, we managed to take one of them, not alive, unfortunately, uh, but it was definitely a human. And uh, the symbol that I described, it's not something familiar to my people. I assumed that it would be familiar to you guys. Yeah. Um, so how far do you think we are from the um, from your village? Um, well, like we said, a few hours. Uh, before we were worrying about uh, the survivability of uh, Ambrose, but it seems that he's all right now. Yeah, but, it, was uh, all, yeah. it was all in his mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh yeah. So just to, just to, not that. <laughs> Not that I want to mess with people tw uh, warping and twisting the story in their own memory, but everything was in his mind except for the saw blade that nearly, <laughs> nearly cut his foot off. <laughs> that was out of love. <laughs> that was out of love. Uh, but anyway, yes. Sounds um, like this human it would be a human group after all. What is their name? Uh, we, we don't know their name. I was I was just saying, I was asking if any of you had heard of them. A ton solution. What's their name? Um, I didn't, I, I think it was, um, it was... It was um, the Dark Hesper. Divine, what was it? <laughs> Order of the Divine Hesper. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Leo that, that worked out, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Order of the Divine Hesper. 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 Hairspray. The divine hairspray. The divine hairspray. I don't know what that is. <laughs> they predict that everyone's gonna have shit hair for the next hundred years. <laughs> well, uh, and it's so scary because they're always right. <laughs> um, so I say, hmm, 
well. <laughs> I uh, haven't heard of them myself, but I will have to be on the lookout for their intentions. Especially if they have had anything to do with your scouts that you're looking for. Indeed. <clears throat> now, where, how far to your village was it? It's a few hours, I believe. Yeah, let us, let us go and rest. I will heal you along the way, my friends. I start like, actually, healing the old. Do we actually? Do we still need healing? Even if it's an illusion, or does the illusion um, actually create physical? Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody finds out that they don't need healing. Yes, in fact, that's true. Okay. <laughs> I start. I start doing a little bit of healing on the side, just to um, give you guys perky. Talk, talk, talking to the um, the elves that encountered these guys before, or at least encountered this type of magic before. If we don't actually physically take the damage, how do they kind of incapacitate people? Do they wait till you get incapacitated and then swoop in then? Um, you know, if we don't actually take the damage, how do they yeah. attack as such? Well, when you've seen them before, um, in addition to uh, causing like distractions that sort of dis distract from you know the real target, but in addition, they also, um, they seem to be capable also of controlling people mentally. I guess we're lucky that uh, that didn't happen to us, but that's something that we've seen. And uh, so turning people against each other is uh, is a, a really big problem. When yeah, they... I'll, I'll, just, I'll just look between um, Ambrose and Leah when, when they say that. <laughs> Perhaps that will explain uh, our actions, I think. Uh, what's the story so thus far? We're throwing tentacles, we're going to an elf place, we're looking for some human scouts. Basically. There's a full catch up on our website that you can find. Uh, all of our episodes uh, are up on the website and the campaign stuff. There you go. Or our YouTube channel. There you go. <coughs> um, so... Yeah, I press on, I guess, on the, the back of my okay. stack as I kind of nurse Karen. So you guys, um, so as you guys sort of, uh, <laughs> you're you're holding the cat, this cat like this. Ah, it's the bond. So you guys sort of wind your way, uh, and again, the um, the initial uh, way back when you, you had fought the tiger earlier in the day, um, that was sort of midday. So now again, we're getting again toward the evening as you guys wander on towards. Um, the final destination here, or at least this particular stop. And um, as things begin to get pretty shadowy and dark in the jungle here, it's very uh, dense, of course, and so um, as the sun goes down, uh, it gets dark earlier in this uh, heavy, can under the heavy canopy. Um, you spot up ahead, um, eventually, a series of what appear to be like lanterns um, and you can see like a slightly, the color of the light is almost like a bluish color. So it doesn't look, looks different than torchlight. Um, and you can see like a few of these lanterns just sort of dotting the horizon as you're sort of looking out. And uh, in the same, you know, so you guys wander closer in that direction. And uh, as you get closer still, you, um, couple things happen. One, you, uh, you begin to hear a faint sound of music coming from uh, sort of up in the distance here, the direction that you guys are headed. I want to like look at myself and make sure it's not me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a built-in stereo system <laughs> in my cyborg body. By the, by the way, Touchpad says, I want to give my Patreon D10,000 to Sydney. Okay. Touchpad, you naughty man. Uh, so, uh, if you're a patron, you can make us roll on our D10,000 throughout the, the month if you guys uh, have varying levels of stuff like that. So, um, thank you very much, Touchpad. So, Sid, can you roll us a D10,000? Yeah. We'll see what happens. Hear me good. Hear me good. Hear me good. This is, of course, a D10,000 wild magic table. Uh, 10 D10. Okay. Uh, uh, D10K is the command. There you go. Uh, Got it? I'm working on it. Four side <laughs> roll, 1D, 10,000. So many zeros. Uh, 17, 26. 17, 26. Caster thinks ethereal monsters are all around him. 
<laughs> Why is it that every time a D10,000 has been rolled, it matches with what's already it works happened? well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I see, yeah. I see yeah. that's some magical, like, power over yeah. the, the table, don't the you magic think? Of... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So, all right, but what happens? So, read it again. She, Costa believes ethereal monsters are all around her. Okay, all right. So, as you guys are getting closer, um, so Sydney, take it away. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on. I, I imagine, like, on. she's very confused because everyone just keeps, like, going forward and there's, like, these things trying to kill us everywhere. She starts swatting at herself. I start like just firing everywhere. Like it's I'm having, I say, Hunter, it's having some form of malfunction or panic attack. <laughs> fix, <laughs> fix it. Did I roll? Because I'm, I'm gonna be shooting. Like I'm just gonna be like, dun, 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 like just oh, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take cover. <laughs> yeah, everyone like dies. It's gone insane. It's gone insane. <laughs> you guys, everybody t like dies behind a tree while she's just like, you know, like flipping out, like, you know, all yeah. over the place. Stay close, ah! sticks at her. Hey. Can you turn it off, Hunter? Is there some way to take Samantha, it down? Would you say so? so what? Would you say, Samantha? Oh, I said just start throwing sticks at her. I'm like, let's <laughs> encourage her. Let's go. <laughs> it's over here, guys. No, it's over here. That's <laughs> <laughs> not being shooting. Helpful. Like, there's just fire everywhere. Is everything on fire at this point? I yeah. imagine it is. Yeah, yeah. You start to like blow towards the jungle, right? I think. That's Setting cool. yourself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's first layer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, mean, I guess given, I mean, given we we are aware of stuff that's we've seen around us. What's that? First assumption. I mean, given given we're aware of the fact that something was uh, uh, watching as we've seen teleporters. Yeah, yeah. Etc. The, the chances are um, we'll just assume initially that the has spotted something that we haven't. Right, right, right. So I'll get behind a bit of cover and see if I can spot whatever Leah's shooting at. Okay, so you can roll perception. Gonna go uh, on a limb here and say that <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> 28. Okay, so um, the 28, you're sort of looking all over and uh, you don't see anything and it's kind of like, you kind of get this weird, almost like like gut level intuition or sort of sixth sense. I mean, that's like your your character is like a hunter, right? So you have this sort of like instinct about these things. And you begin to scan over uh, Leah as you're sort of looking from her, trying to figure out the d relative, you know, relationship between where she is and where something else would be attacking her and different stuff like that. And you spot, um, like in this mechanical part, like on her chest, where you see she has this almost like, it's like a, again, it's like a heart, except it's made out of, um, it has a magical component that seems to power it or something like that. And you spot leading into it, there are like wires, and there's this one wire and you see like little sparks sort of like jumping from it. Function. Oh, Malfunctioning. No, 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 no. <laughs> I say, Hunter, there's clearly something wrong with her. There's nothing here. Unless you and see something. <clears throat> um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll say to Ambrose, no, I can't see anything either. So, shout over to Leah. What is it you're seeing? There's, there's nothing here. Yeah, I'm like out of character for a second. Right. Um, so this is happening. You know how, like, when we, in the last one, when uh, David's character would, like, switch between, like, mechanical eye and real eye like with the electronic stuff he couldn't see that so does right. that mean when we switch to the other one that i'm like not affected by this anymore is that what we're getting at here no it's not that you know what's um so wait uh sorry wait, me away under under detail, okay. <laughs> what, 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 wait what, what so your question is when he switches does that affect your character is that your no, no, no 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 like yeah, so like the parallel is that like when he would just look with his like normal human eye, he like he could see the illusion from before. Right, right. But then when he would look with the electronic one, he couldn't see it. Right, 
But this so, time he sees nothing on either spectrum. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But so back to me. Yes. We got two hearts. Yes. So the if it's switching to the electronic one and I switch into this logical yeah. thing, am I still affected by this? Do I still think they're all around me? Yeah, you, you do. What happens is you, was, yeah, so you do think that they're around you as of right now. So that's where we are now. We'll, we'll explain more as we go along here. Okay. So I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to load up a... Um, some form of stun shell. Okay. So no, no damage, but would knock the person out. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, Might um, have to take her foot off. Do <laughs> sweet mouth so You can roll, uh, roll it incapacitated is the thing. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to have a look and see what I can use. Um, I think that you can use... Um, Your hand. Yeah, you can use your exact. You, you would probably want to just like use your agility to just you know, yeah, place her in a sleeper hold, as it were. <laughs> um, well, I'll, 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 I'll given everything's meant to be like some form of ammunition, I'll load up like a special kind of stun shell. Yeah, sure, that's I'll fine. Do agility versus toughness through the rifle. Yep, yep, that's fine. Go ahead and roll. Um, so if I find it in my window. <laughs> What's up, Sarkany? Nice. Going for broke, good low blood. <laughs> uh, 28. Alright, lots of 28. Um, so you managed to uh, knock her unconscious um, as you your stun shell strikes home and uh, she's like sort of already on the edge of like some sort of meltdown anyway and her, her body just kind of shuts down. <clears throat> I walk over. <laughs> What is wrong with it? Um, I'm not sure, but I'll go over try and try and inspect what I what I assume is damage to her systems. Yep. Uh, yeah, it looks like results. looks like the wire that you sp saw sparks coming from. It looks like it's uh, you know not properly connected. Is it just something I can I can reconnect, or is it something which has been damaged? Um, you can. You know, you can just, you think that you can reconnect it. It's up, you know, it's, it's up to you out of character to determine whether you want to take that risk. But it, from what your sort of cursory glance and, you know, you're pretty, you have a pretty good eye anyway, you think you can see where it like connects in um, as far as- um, So I'll, I'll turn around to Ambrose. Do you have anything we can bind her with before we reconnect this wire just in case she starts shooting again? Yes, of course. I um, can drop some vines. Yeah, my energy. Like grab some like vines around her, like pans. Sam, what did you say, Sam? Mud, clay. Mud and clay. <laughs> You're gonna bind her with mud. You gonna put her in the kiln? Bind her. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so Cindy's going to wake up with a mud, my mud pack face mask. Yeah. One oh. kiln to rule them all. One <laughs> kiln it's all to about bind the them. earth. Why not? <laughs> I was just trying to get rid of your blackheads while you were asleep. You dig a hole. Well, actually, I mean, why, so babe? So your character's quite strong. You could probably just kind of like pin her. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I thought that the vines, might, the vines might not be a good idea given we've been attacked by vines. I don't know if it, it would be a good idea for <laughs> Leah to come through, come round. <laughs> They're not tentacles. <laughs> I know I could make tentacles. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, Sam, do you, want to, do you want to try and pin, pin uh, Leah down for when I plug this cable in? Let's do it. I'll have, Sam. Like, I'll have the cat and the stag nearby, just like step on her in case. <laughs> yeah. Sam, you got it? What? Are you on board, Sam? I'm on board. Okay. You sure? sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, right. know. I had people yelling at me, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. You mean it? You mean not us? Or us? <laughs> <laughs> you mean real people? Real people. <laughs> oh, God. oh God, no. All right, so, all right, so go ahead and uh, we will. Let's see. Um, high or low? We'll make it fifty-fifty here. Actually, less than that. 
Uh, high or low? You guys decide. I'm gonna call it. I always get high. Always get high. Yes. Okay. So, Maybe. Maybe. so uh, <laughs> seven or higher, and you're good. Nine, you're good. Uh, she comes back online without any incident. As uh, you plug the thing in, plug the wire back in, uh, re resecure it, and um, assuming that you wake her up, she, uh, you know, you come back to Sydney, and, and uh, you're, you, everything seems normal. Whatever you were seeing before is no longer there. Welcome back. <laughs> Did you kill them all? They were broken. Yes. Uh, yes. What? Yes. We killed them all. We killed them all. <laughs> Good. You, you took a blow to the head, though, but you'll you'll be okay. Good. I just want to hug everyone and be like, I'm just so proud. <laughs> so I look, many. I look really uncomfortable. We're everywhere. So I'll just I'll just turn to Ambrose. How many do you think there was? Fifty, sixty? At least seventeen. <laughs> probably more. I was gonna say. That. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, quite a quite a tough battle, but luckily uh, we all came through. <laughs> That's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we hid the bodies too. It's all good. Yeah. Well, it, it, the bodies just vanished. It was a fear. How long was I out? <laughs> How long was I out? <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> I just. Let's continue We're quite close to the Elven village. You can, you can have a rest there. Ambrose just. Ah, mm. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm just like in awe of this party because, like, in my head there were hundreds. They're just everywhere, and they just go team. <laughs> go team. Go yeah. team. So you see, like, um, you can see Imladril is sort of like standing back, watch, observing all this, and you're like, we're just a little bit away from the Elven city, and you can see this look of concern cross her face as. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just wondering whether Leah with a, a random hand cannon firing is going to decimate the elven school for all the kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <I'm> America. Terrible. Not like my school specifically has had, I think, three shooting threats in the past two weeks. So when we go, we're not allowed to walk outside, and there are cops everywhere. Like we're constantly on lockdown because they think we're gonna die. That is rather intense. I love my school. I love my school. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't, I don't miss school at all. Um, so, <laughs> so, all right. So uh, she kind of like reluctantly you know, sort of hesitantly turns and begins to sort of lead the way again here. Uh, as you guys uh, get closer, the sound of the music uh, grows grows louder as you, of course, get closer and get closer to these lanterns that you spot and sort of from a, a far ways off. And um, this sort of like, uh, this sort of dark, cold, wet sort of feeling that you've had from this general area, um, it seems like the closer you get to these lanterns, the less that that feeling is sort of like weighing on you as you guys are going forward. And um, it almost feels like, and eventually, you know, you sort of walk where you're real close to them. And when you're close to the lanterns, it feels like your mind is more clear than it's been, you know, for quite some time, at least for, you know, a while on this, this particular journey. Um, and there's definitely, you feel like something magical happening there as you guys uh, get closer. Love. Um, what's that? Nothing. You, you say love? Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it! <laughs> we, all look up, we all look up into the stars together and hold hands. <laughs> we find the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> Well, it's funny you should mention that because as you guys get closer, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. <laughs> no, no, no. The first thing, not Christmas. Oh. Um, it's love. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so as you guys get closer, um, you begin to hear this sound, and I'm I'm going to uh, 
We're going to do a, 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 like a one minute musical interlude here. So I don't want to bore people with music that they don't like to hear, but um, this is my game. So if you don't like it, um, <laughs> this is my game. So as we say here, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. You said that, not me. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys get, you guys hear as you sort of approach mm. the sound coming from the distance. <laughs> I start singing along. <laughs> and bro starts getting down, he likes to My jam! <laughs> If the tree house is rocking, don't come and knocking. That's right, exactly. All right, here. There we go. It's just in the background now. We're good. All right. So, um, as you guys sort of like, you come into this, you, you sort of, you get close to these lanterns and then you spot off in the distance, you hear this music coming from, from and you see very strange, like there are like, uh, there are trees and you can see a, a number of lanterns and also other torches, not just these special lanterns. And off, the, off of like the reflection, you can see that there's water below and above. There are like these uh, round platforms around these trees and these trees are absolutely gigantic. And uh, they have like these intricate platforms built above them. And uh, it appears that they're having some sort of like, you know, party or something like that. Um, one might even call it a hoedown. I would say. Hello. Uh, you know. I'm familiar with the term. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a little bit familiar. All too familiar. <laughs> All too familiar. So as as this as this scene is unfolding, I'll I'll, 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 I'll just I'll just turn to the female and elf. And go, this is another illusion, isn't it? <laughs> Ambrose no, no, just. No, no, this is not. She sort of like she just smiles at you and says, "Well." If this is an illusion, then uh, it's familiar and it's the, best, it's the most welcome illusion that I've seen in some time. Um, but in any case, uh, so for anyone who's traumatized by the idea of a hoedown, you know, trigger warning. <laughs> trigger warning. <laughs> You've never been to one of my hoedowns. I just want to say that. Wow. I, no. and so anyway. Have well, any of y'all actually been to a hoedown? Anybody? No, I see. See, in, in in the UK, taking taking the term "ho" yeah. and "down" yeah. entirely different. Well, we have that same meaning in America, but we just don't give a shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so what, what well, we do? To yourself. We don't. Do. What we do for dancing uh, over here in the UK is we get drunk off our face, so we can't remember anything. We go to a yeah. nightclub, we take as many substances as we can and uh, we forget everything the next day, so you don't have the embarrassment of knowing that you were dancing. So maybe like you were in exactly. Well, that's that why is. the hoedown is valid. You get drunk that's and have exactly fun. what a hoedown is. <laughs> you already know. Exactly. <laughs> Guess what we're doing on 4th of July, babe. <laughs> <laughs> babe. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucked. <laughs> I need to forget. That's okay. Uh, enough, yeah. it's fine. I'm sure Sydney will record it on the phone. I'm gonna try to tell this as like a 30 second story rather than make it like a, it could be a really long story. I'm known for telling stories that are far too long. Um, but uh, so when I was in college, I used to have a hoedown like once a month, right? We would do this, everybody would get together, get drunk off their asses so they can't remember what they did and just dance and go crazy, right? And um, <laughs> I had this one friend, she was very introverted and I always wanted her to come, but she was too afraid that the hoedown was like too much for her or whatever, you know? And uh, 
she, she finally said, I, it was the last one. I was moving out, got moving on with life, you know, to a more sad and depressing chapter. And uh, she, she never showed up to the event. And I saw her like the next day or whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, you said you were going to finally come. You never showed up, you know? And uh, she says, well, I did show up, actually. She says, but I got to the house, and I was looking, and, you know, at the house from the outside, and the whole house was going like this. <laughs> 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 All right, sorry, That's sorry, story time. She walks in and there's like a bowl full of keys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll pull up one level in terms of in, in, you know inception here, mm. stories within stories within stories, and uh, so you guys um, you guys spot so, you know, from from the point of view of my character, my character's probably never been oh, to yeah. a proper elven village before. No, never, no, most definitely not. And this is uh, if the rumors are true about the elven villages that were steamrolled back home. This would not be anything like uh, what <laughs> what happens there. <laughs> uh, and uh, Will, your character yeah. has also has never really not seen anything it, quite yeah. like this either. <laughs> there appear to be people in a circle. They're like dancing, and then there's people outside of the circle. They've got fiddles and all this sort of thing, and they're um, you know they're they're going to town as it were. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very excited by all of this. Oh, I've heard tell of these events. I start yeah. my pipe out and smoking. So I'll, I'll I'll lean close to Ambrose and go. Yes, I've heard it's called the Circle Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's uh, that's later on in the year. This that's is just crazy. the this is the Circle Booning. <laughs> uh, Big difference, my son. Uh, and I like I get down off the stag, and I'm like, whenever I'm moving, I'm like shuffling and dancing a bit. So like, yeah. when I'm moving, I'm dancing. Oh yeah, and uh, you, you guys feel like um, you have this feeling that you that sort of comes over you with the music about there's this sort of wild abandon and and, and sort of sense of freedom. So now you guys, your characters might react to it differently, but it's you can it's tangible. It's almost like you can just sense it. In the, in the atmosphere as you guys are seeing all these people they're like you know really really happy and just free and all this sort of thing <clears throat> it's just it's quite lucky that the d1000 d10000 roll didn't happen now yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on that note here it comes yeah. <laughs> come on somebody uh, so there's a party is there beer Hell yeah, there's beer. Oh, well, um, you know where my character's going straight to. Uh, we call it ambrosia here, my darling. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, there is in fact uh, spirits that can be yeah, boy. ambrosia. <laughs> yeah, I boy. Yeah. <laughs> He's the life of the party. <laughs> Drink deep, my children. Drinking contest. <laughs> I can't you yours. Go. <laughs> I, I all suddenly think that Ambrose is Jesus because of himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he turned the water into wine. I feel like uh, I feel like Friar Tuck. <laughs> yes. Oh, <man. laughs> I need a drink right now. This is, this yeah, is too yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, so <laughs> so you guys. Uh, oh, jeez. I can't keep it together. I'm sorry. I'm trying to start here. Um, <laughs> what's up? I said, uh, mine, Will's character, we just need to have a drinking contest, that's all. Yeah, that's I right. think that's, that's what's happening, really. <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Let's see if you can best, <laughs> best uh, be uh, Ambrosia. Uh, they called it after me, you see. I'm like, starting to <laughs> drink him. Oh, man, there's a great conversation on, in chat about this. That's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's a, just just as you just as you suspect this, but it's a, it's a, it's a circle <laughs> drug happening. <laughs> oh my! All right, so again, you, the one thing that happens is you spot oh, all these people. They're all just like. Do we spot Poochie Poochie? What's up, Poochie Poochie? <laughs> Thank you so much for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You are a gentle pooch and a scholar. <laughs> what is, what is, uh, oh man, yeah, Poochie Woochie is definitely there, but I don't know, 
Uh-oh. Maybe it's a horse. <laughs> like someone's pet horse. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but he's definitely there. Uh... Pooches are ducks, usually, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Oh, okay. So anyway, you... Um, you see that there are like these interconnected, um, like vine, they're, they're made out of vines and there are like these bridges that go from one like sort of platform to the other. And below is water and then there are these trees and these platforms are sort of like around these trees and there are, um, you know, like these vine bridges that connect between the trees and these various platforms and that sort of thing. Um, you can't see too much again because it's, it's dusk now and uh, the, the sun has mostly gone down. Um, so what, what about um, our escorts? So what's the elven woman kind of, and the, and the guy, the cloaked stranger, saying well, they, to us? They, they seem to sort of like, you spot them sort of look like back and forth at each other quite a bit. And they're sort of, they both seem to be trying to get a gauge on what the other one is thinking or feeling or, or you know, something like that. And so there's this kind of awkwardness between the two of them as, uh, you know, as you guys are sort of entering into the midst of this chaos and stuff like that. Mm. Um, in addition, um, eventually she sort of walks into the midst of everything, though, and uh, she sort of looks at you guys, checking to see, like, if you're following or whatever, um, as she sort of begins to walk, you know, over one of the bridges toward you know, like one of the other platforms where there seems to be like the most activity or something like that. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly go with with her, whether, I don't know whether the others are going to wander off or not, but I'll go with her. I, I'll like... sort of stick, I, think, I think for now we should probably stick together. Yeah, yeah. I feel like me and Senna are probably drinking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, yeah. you guys drinking feel... contests, we're still doing it. But... I, I just want to like, find the cowboy hat and be trying to examine it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? There's, well, yeah, there's, you don't, you're like, you, you're thinking like, I've heard of this back home, I know it. And you're like looking all over for the cowboy hats, but you don't find one, unfortunately, or at least not yet. Uh, you're, you're confused by what this. What kind of hoedown is this? Exactly, you're like, what's wrong what with these people? What are they, what are they doing? Amateurs, obviously. So, for a fortitude roll for both uh, Senra and uh, Ambrose, we're having a drinking contest here. Nice. I'm so winning. Probably. Yeah, Probably. I would think so. Okay. I, don't, I don't mean... Like, Barbarian. Do you, do you uh, Ambrose does just, like, eat toxins for, for breakfast and dinner, so it's, it's entirely possible he's got, like, a fairly iron stomach for... <laughs> <laughs> These toxins? Okay, well, if that's the case, then we'll give you advantage, Will. How do you like that? Sure. Uh, but I'm a chi chi. I can just regenerate my health and all that, so I'll never yeah, That's a good point. Uh, so, I guess you both get advantage, so it just got worse for you. <laughs> so, this is a force shoot, is it? You want us to roll force shoot? Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, so, this roll here, so 2d6. 2d6? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one. Okay. Well, advantage, right? So you drop, you drop one, right? Is what's your fortitude? It's like. Uh, so my yeah. fortitude is d8. So three. Oh, d8. D8. Then why are you rolling two d6, huh? Because I have advantage. Or I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but it's <laughs> also. It's Mine's a five. What do you got there? Two d8. Keep one. It's so it's. I'm drunk. Two... Sixteen. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> Uh, what's so your... my four two is two d sixes. So yours is three d six k two. Sixteen. Can she beat it? Fifty. Uh, <laughs> ah man. A colossal upset. <laughs> From out of nowhere. <laughs> I break the table. Since you won since you win by one point, you're barely conscious by like a thread as she finally blacks out and uh, nearly goes over the edge, uh, falling into the water. You manage to just barely catch her. Uh, At least I get washed. I mean, I probably swim. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I roar and cheer. 
<laughs> and then I, I probably like fall over myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably go in too, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve's like, no! <laughs> Thank you so much to XP. It's overrated. He donates five pounds. Wild Magic the loser of the drinking competition. Oh! <laughs> <Fuck 'em. laughs> you know what That's, he had to do, Sam? Yeah, We're uh, doing this again. That's a, uh, a D ten thousand. <laughs> What's up, Pat? Oh man, I was talking to Pat on uh, on Twitter. He's uh, he said as long as it's not Zotmui, he's in. Definitely, he's got a, a composite bow in his hands because he knows there's a lot of tentacles going on. He's not a fan, so... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just a bit of banter me and Pat have, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sam, it's uh, forward slash roll uh, D10,000. I can actually put it in the Zoom thing here so you can do it. Roll one D10. Slash roll D10,000? Yeah, I put it in the Zoom chat, you can just... Copy pasta. Oh, I already had it right, typed out. Nice. Wait, 1460. Oh, oh no. Wait, do you want me to look that for you, bro? 1460 on the Wild Magic Surge table is. Let's have a look. 1460 is. Caster loses stereophonic hearing. Minus one penalty on surprise runs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't surprise me, guys! Oh, no! I have a mace. She, when she falls, she hits her head on the railing, going deaf as, uh, as, her, as her ear slaps right against the, you know... <laughs> oh, man, I can't speak your okay, language, um, now I can't hear? Awesome. Leah, Leah can fix that with, with, a, with a little bit of a cybernetic replacement. Yeah, she's a cut off your ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. It's totally waterproof. No problem at all. <laughs> no. I, at least I'll be awake more. I'll just get shocked with water every single time it rains. <laughs> <laughs> I fall I fall in and probably bump you some more. Uh, <laughs> rip, rip stereophonics. Um, all right. So she's deaf. All right. Great. <clears throat> so that'll be fun. So you'll be, you'll be speaking up a lot more now that you don't know what anybody's saying there. Uh, no one will know what I'm saying. I'll be like, what? <laughs> just screaming at us all the time. Well, yeah. you understand what I'm saying, well. True, yeah, it's true. But I'm so <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I'm old and deaf anyway, so it's. <laughs> so what's she telling you? You will. I. I... She has good bed. I think we're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So while this is all happening, so so Sydney and David, you're, you you guys, you, you know, this is all like simultaneous as you guys follow uh, Imlid Real over to, um, you know, one of the more central areas here. Um, yeah. So while we're kind of traveling through the area, I'm gonna keep an eye out for any non non elves. Yeah. You yeah. Around. Okay. Um, I will let you know if you spot any, but as this time you do not. Um, so there are, it does not seem to be any other humans that you can see. Um, so she, so she sort of leads the way, uh, the, the hooded stranger of course is with you guys as well. And, uh, eventually, um, you make your way over to, and sort of, there's a musical, like sort of, uh, a, a band takes a break as it were. Um, now there are other musical groups playing in other sort of various spread out areas on different like raised platforms throughout the, the, the you know the jungle here um but they sort of take a break as she approaches and um the 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 guy who's playing the fiddle he just kind of takes a break all of a sudden or tells the band like you know as he sort of drops everything he, he almost kind of halfway runs um as he sees her and gives her like a, a huge hug as um, she sort of uh, returns his embrace, and uh, you can see you see her from behind, and you see his face sort of looking at you guys over his shoulder, over her shoulder, and uh, you just see a look of uh, just joy and relief sort of on this guy's face as uh, they speak, and, and she and she says, um, he says, "Mother, what took you so long?" And then he sort of looks around for a moment, and he says, "Where is?" Thanor, exactly. Um, he goes on to ask about, you know, how they are and, you know, mentioned something about 
um, any news from the Hierophant, and something else about, uh, you know, uh, she's saying like, she says, well, you know, we unfortunately we, we had not yet found or located the Hierophant. That is, uh, that is your brother's task. Thanor is currently uh, seeking him out. Um, and then she sort of just dismisses the matter, and she's but, but we'll we'll talk more about that later. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to introduce you to some. Uh, these are some uh, strangers that we met recently um, in the uh, in the woods. However, um, one of our own, and she sort of begins to look about and is puzzled as she cannot locate Ambrose, um, and is sort of like looking around and does sort of like spots me like. I'm bursting out. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of like burst out through the crowd and, and she just sort of hangs her head and shakes her head and then says, well, in any case, um, he doesn't look well right now, but he had a different kind of ailment earlier today and uh, we agreed to uh, sort of help him. It, se it seems that we were um, accosted by the same by this strange group, uh, and she begins to go into detail, explaining the attack and the you know whatever illusion you know dark magic is at work or something like that. And he seems like very you know you can tell he's worried. Um, seems like this is the first time that he's heard of you know any of this kind of thing. Um, and then she says, "So uh, let me introduce you. Uh, these are the the folks that I just uh, recently came across in the woods." And she says. Uh, this is um, uh, this this is Timothy as she motions to uh, a hooded figure that is with you guys, and then sort of goes on to introduce. And this is uh, Lucian and uh, Leah, and uh, you know, and he sort of comes over to you know, sort of you know, do a like a, a handshake kind of thing with each of you guys as a greeting, um, and uh, that's kind of. That's kind of anything. Sorry, I didn't want to take forever with me narrating between two different characters. So, what do you guys want to do there? <clears throat> um, I will just remind everyone because we're on now. We have a moment break here. <laughs> if you haven't followed, hit a follow button, join us. We have five nights a week, nine shows a week. Uh, every hundred followers, you guys get to decide what happens in our game. Uh, after this show, uh, in an hour's time, we're moving on to the Dungeon Masters Workshop. I'm going to be doing a Roll20 tutorial. Then we'll probably do some Curse of Strahd prep. Uh, later on, if you haven't checked out Open Legend, you can do over their website. It's a fun game. Um, and uh, yeah, they haven't retweeted. How many tweets were I? I should check that. Uh, at 25 retweets, you guys get to decide what happens in our game. So um, hit that retweet if you haven't already. Um, yes. I guess I um, I guess I I I pull through to the crowd. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, what is going on here? Do you, have you seen the scouts? Somebody... Talk. Scouts? What scouts? They're looking for human scouts, the humans here. Uh, no, we have not, uh, we've not seen any scouts, no. Oh. We have not seen any humans, in fact. What, uh... What do you... I don't, I'm, I don't understand. What, what's... Okay. And he sort of looks at you like, he looks a little annoyed as, can, can I help you, sir? <clears throat> I don't know, can you? <laughs> We're looking for humans. Um, explain, Hunter, or Machine, <clears throat> one of you, explain. I am their guide, you see? You're muted, you're muted, David. <laughs> I am muted because you were talking too loud. I've understood yeah. you now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, so I'll, um, I'll step in and say, uh, well, originally we were scouting out to look for a missing party of soldiers from the human camp. Um, we were tracking them quite far into the, generous the wilderness. Thanks so much to Disc. He says, wild search to Pootie Wootie. You said he was there, so it's totally canon. Thanks so much, yeah. Disc. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh some some some, some off-camera character has something very profound happen to them right now. Okay. Yeah. Do you Poochie do you want to roll a d10 thousand for them, Brian? Seeing as you're technically playing yeah. Poochie Woochie. I, I guess I am. <laughs> uh, this could go horribly wrong. Um, 
<laughs> could go so well. You guys have given me so much power in my hands. <laughs> I, could, I could apply this anywhere. You know, this yeah. is, you know, this is far reaching. Uh, what? Wait, what? Shit. What? <laughs> what? What? What happened? Troll. I can't hear you. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> seven thousand and sixty one. That's a high one. The high one's usually good. Um seven thousand sixty one reads <laughs> Target's clothing turns to stone. <laughs> what? What? Target's clothing turns to stone. <laughs> 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 this horse or this dog just becomes stone. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I am happy I didn't have that. Yeah, that is probably best that it was not at a player character. As, uh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so you, you see Poochie Woochie just sort of like bound, this, this joyfully bounding all over the place, this dog <laughs> jumping all over the, the platform, and then all of a sudden, in midair, it just stops moving and <laughs> Effortlessly, right over the edge, as uh, <laughs> you just hear a loud oh, splash in the water below, as uh, it, and then just bubbles. <laughs> she disappears off the side. Oh man, that's ridiculous. All right, rip Poochie Woochie. Uh, rip Poochie Woochie. Can we, get, can we get some angel thumps for Poochie Woochie? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rip. Gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh Second. Don't go in the water. Apparently, you lose your hearing or you die. Yeah. Just in there. Yeah. Stone to water pitch. is dangerous. It's well known. Well known yeah. fact. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so back to this uh, parlay, a very weak parlay on the part of the player characters, I might add, um, as we are discussing the. Uh, sort of introduction of the group here. Things don't look good for our heroes as they've made little progress in convincing anyone of their uh, positive intentions or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what the intentions are. <laughs> I, I think I told. I, know, I really don't know either. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't know, why don't you explain what it is you're doing? I, I say, I'm just a guide. <laughs> I'm just a guide. <laughs> Here for food. As I was saying earlier, um, so we were tracking a group of human um, soldiers who seemed to have been attacked by some large creature. Yeah. Um, they originally, the party originally numbered six, but seemed to have been whittled down to two before we lost the trail. Uh, did you uh, yeah, Did you encounter any wild creatures on your way here, I wonder? <laughs> we, did, uh, we encountered a... Um, Each other. Various creatures, including a pack of the pamphlet-type creatures pointing at... The, the pamphlet we have got with him. Uh, the the, um, the the elf managed to tame one of them. Oh, but, yes. Um, Very good. Well, I don't think that they, uh, well, the panthers, I suppose, could be, uh, uh, you know, I suppose panthers could be responsible, but I... I no, no, the, 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 creature that, the creature that seemed to have attacked had a much larger claw span. So kind of shown the sort of size of the, and described the wounds to him. Yeah, yeah. And David, does your character know, do you know out of character, David, that the approximate size of this claw span is the same as the tiger that was uh, mysteriously and instantly killed by, by the panther? I'm not sure if I was, did I fail to clarify that or something like that? Oh, right. So the, the flying the flying tiger was <laughs> yeah. not in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> the exact uh, same size. Yeah. The... <laughs> so your character just now realizes this as you're uh, yeah. talking. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, I'll, I'll continue to say, and later um, we were attacked by um, a flying tiger-like creature that could well have been responsible for the um, the death of the soldiers earlier. The size of it kind of matches what we were what we were expecting. However, we did run into a group of humans who we believe you guys have had um, issues with before using illusion, sort of deadly illusionary magic. Um, and the, uh, yes, I, I had heard about that. Uh, uh, our uh, one of our elders, Lithuithel, had mentioned that um, she. Uh, I believe she was actually there, and sort of turns to 
uh, Imladril, who's with you, um, the you know the archer, and, and says, uh, yeah, "Well, you were there, um, yeah." And and Imladril just sort of chimes in and says, "Yes, yes, um, uh, we were, you know, we were all together. Uh, Lithuithel was there during the attack that I spoke to you about earlier." <clears throat> So um, shortly after that, we we arrived here basically to to learn more about um, if we can be of assistance to each other. I guess um, you would certainly. While we initially came here looking to see what happened to the soldiers, it's possible the soldiers have performed uh, were possibly running by um, from this illusionary magic. Perhaps they discovered something about these people, these humans. Hmm. I see. Um, well, we haven't encountered these soldiers, so I'm not sure how much help we can be. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> Imladril sort of like, sort of says, and also, um, they seem to, uh, they seem to know something about um, this particular character as she takes out the uh, picture that you had given her before and uh, sort of shows it to uh, the, the man that you guys are speaking with. Um, oh, and his eyes sort of like widen as he's like, oh, oh, this, uh, I didn't know that anybody uh, knew he was here. Are you, are you sure about this, mother? And she says, well, as sure as I can be, I, I am slightly worried, but uh, they don't seem to be on the same side as these, uh, these strange occult. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of interrupt to that point. You say, you, you say he's here, as in, in this village? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, well, mm, sort of, he's here. Uh, I think maybe you should speak to Lithuithel about that yourself. Um, that's not necessarily uh, my domain. And he sort of begins to get, real, like, trail off and get very awkward here. <clears throat> so, yeah, so um, I will turn to his mother then and, and say, um, perhaps you're son could show my friends around the village while we talk about him? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, there's plenty to do as she, like, you know, gestures to the, um, to all of the, uh, uh festivities going on. I'm taking uh, my hangover herbs, by the way. <laughs> you what? I'm taking my, like, hangover herbs. <laughs> <laughs> Just man it out. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, very well. So, uh, yeah. So on that note, uh, well, I mean, I suppose uh, I can I can check and see if Lothriethal can speak to you. Um, maybe if you wait here, I'll go uh, and uh, return in a bit. We will wait here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, she goes. Uh, the festivities continue. Uh, her son um, begins to play again. Uh, as the, the sort of like resumes where we left off or whatever. And um, comes back about five minutes later, not, not very long. Um, yes, it seems that uh, Lithuithel is very interested to speak to anyone who has uh, knowledge about this, uh, this child. So uh, said that she will see you now if you wish. So f forgive my ignorance, but who, uh, Lefura, how, how does she, what's, what's her role in the Elven camp? Well, she is our, um, sort of, uh, prophetess, I suppose, if that word means anything to you. Um, she's like, uh, advisor, elder of sorts, and so she's our expert on, uh, things magical and, uh, supernatural. <clears throat> Cool. So let's um, uh, let's go speak to her. Very well. Speak to the sage. <clears throat> so um, uh, so so David, how? What are you uh, telling the other guys here? <laughs> um, I'll just say that the uh, I'll just kind of say to them. I'll hang back a little bit as we're um leading into this sort of position and I'll just say that um, the, the, the photos of a the, fo the photos of the son of a friend of mine um, who asked me to keep an eye out he went missing a while back um, just the son of a, a soldier wait one of these soldiers 
You're looking for is the son of a friend of yours. No, no, no. The 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 scouts. Uh, the soldier wasn't in the scouting party. This is someone who went miss, went missing a, a while back. One of my friends um, asked me to keep a lookout when they heard I was going out scouting, just in case. This this person went missing um, a lot longer ago. I see. Well, I will happily speak with this sage. We more likely have a better uh, understanding than upon her meeting a human armed. I would say Raises I would go up speak electronic arm. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, say it's, it's, I do. It's kind of like mechanical walking noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I say I say I do most of the initial uh, conversing. Um, if you think that would help, of course. I will introduce you all. And I, uh, I head to the uh, tent as I start my taking my herbs to kind of get my background again. Basically, like smelling salts. Yeah. Are you gonna try to bring Sam back? Is that what you're doing? I'll probably just take. Uh, yeah, I probably should. Yeah. I get Sandra <laughs> and I like stuff some herbs towards you. Eat okay. these. You'll feel better. What? She's unconscious. <laughs> You, you beat her in the drinking cup. Yeah. Slap her in the face. <laughs> pour some water over her face. Are you going to slap me in my good ear or my bad ear? Your good ear, yeah. Oh. I'll yeah. probably vote. The other one can go deaf. <laughs> <laughs> probably vote. So I uh, well, wake up, time to go. Uh, I like stuff some, stuff some herbs in your mouth. I feel better. <laughs> Don't worry, young one. Maybe better luck next so time. Neat. Better luck next time. I like <laughs> pat you on the shoulder, <laughs> drag you up. Right. You, you wake up with a splitting headache as you uh, have fallen and hit in your head on the way into the water. You're also soaking wet, and you're not sure how that happened exactly. Um, I figured someone poured beer on me, or a beer, <laughs> poured beer on myself. <laughs> That's excellent. <clears throat> All right, so... Um, David gets a lot of stage time, but that's okay. Uh, so you, you go off, and uh, you speak, David, to... Um, there's this one of these, um, and it's not, these platforms are, um, you can't see much about the architecture, but it's not just like open air. Some of these were, but the one that you, that you head toward is got like a full on like roof with like woven leaves and all this kind of stuff. And it's got a door and, and all that. And, um, sort of like knocking on the door and then enter, you know, accompanying or escorting you. Ian Ledrill sort of knocks on the door and opens, and uh, you see before you um, a very interesting-looking uh, figure, which I have the... Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, let's see. Okay. You got that? Yeah. All right. Loofy, loofy, do. All right. So the thing that you notice immediately is as you open the door and this figure sort of turns to look at you, the unusual thing that happens is as her head turns, her hair does not seem to, t to follow her head. It's almost like it's frozen in some sort of time distorted way. That's very difficult to explain. She also so I'll, has- I'll just, I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll nudge Leah's character and go, is that hairspray you were talking about earlier? <laughs> she's part of the group kill her she's a witch the divine hairspray if there were any way to get a hundred years of bad hair this would be it probably oh. um, as uh, she um, she also has a strange aura about her in addition it's like uh, you know the pavement in the summer that radiates like this warping sort of uh, like you know, light around it seems to bend or something yeah. weird like that. Um, you see that also like, around this person, and um, it's just, except for it has a sort of golden quality to it. And her her clothes, her clothing is um, the 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 picture's not entirely faithful. She's actually got a shawl that kind of covers her up some more, but the shawl also seems to sort of like move at a different pace from her body. Um, and uh, so she said almost otherworldly quality about her. In any case, um, she turns to look at you and um, she just, uh, she, uh, she sort of, stare, you know, looks at you with a kind of piercing, like, glare for a time and then says, well, how, uh, how may I help you? 
So I'll kind of nudge Ambrose. I think you were going to do the introductions. Yeah, I think <laughs> he I'll... has something to say. So I grab like Senra, and then I rush back to the tent with these guys, uh, and I, <laughs> uh, I, I bow <laughs> in an elvish way. Uh, I say, yeah, yeah, hello, my name is Ambrose. Yeah. Uh, this is Senra. Uh, she doesn't appear to be able to hear very well. Uh, this, I said this all now as well, this is, um, the hunter. <laughs> uh, and, and this is the machine. Um, uh, and I say, uh, I switch to common, uh, actually I say in Elvis, do you speak any common, my lady? Um, I have, uh, I have very limited, uh, experience with it. I encountered a few others who, who spoke it. I have not quite mastered the tongue myself yet. Well, Welcome shall... to the game. <laughs> then I shall be your translator. And for the sake of this conversation, I'll translate to the group. One. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's not good. She <laughs> 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 doesn't translate a lot either. <laughs> so, yeah, I say, uh, uh, we are looking for some scouts. But you love. We're looking for some scouts, uh, humans, and uh, they were here in the area at some point. We've been following their trail. Uh, so after, we... as, as he's kind of like talking, I'm obviously not understanding what he's saying. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, as, as, he, as he finishes, <laughs> I'll say, ask him about the scouts. I, I brush him aside. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the scouts near it. But we ran into some problems with the... Um, strangeness going on in the forest. We believed that we were being attacked and that we had been mortally wounded, but in fact we realized it was all an illusion. And apparently there's some group of humans to do we've called uh, the divine hairspray or something. And they are doing this, so we don't know anything about them. We were wondering if you had any information on them or any ideas as to where our scouts might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've uh, I've not seen the scouts, um, unfortunately. Uh, we have encountered this strange uh, this uh, group of uh, mages or, or whatever whatever they are exactly. Um, it was actually some time ago. Uh, it's been a number of weeks now since we had last encountered them. I'm surprised to hear that they were they are in the area. Um, I had set up some lanterns of warding to protect against their illusions uh, some time ago. Uh, I didn't see any of these out there. <laughs> they were but a few hours away from your camp. Well, I'm glad to hear that the uh, lanterns are doing their job then. <laughs> <clears throat> I feel sarcastic with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, sarcastic. So, um, the ask the, um, the Elven Archer for the photo and then pass the photo to the seer woman and sort of say to Ambrose, if, ask her about if, if she knows. Have you seen this man? He's a friend of this hunter. And as you look at the photo, Will, your character never had seen the photo, but it's actually, um, the photo is in fact uh, not a man at all, as uh, what you all see. Those who are able to see the photo, hmm. uh, it's the photo of a, what appears to be a very young boy, maybe you know, 10, 11 years old, something like that. Um, and uh, so anyway, passing this photo along, um, she just nods her head. Uh, yes, it's really quite tragic, isn't it? I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry that you've uh, come too late. Is this a friend of yours? A friend of this hunter, what, what has befallen the child? Well, the child, um... That's very difficult to explain. Um, we have, uh... And she sort of looks at you, Ambrose, in a puzzled sort of a way. I, I'm not sure... I mean, are you familiar with the ways of, uh... The weave? Your people? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Will, your uh, character has not heard of this. Um, he refers to, she says, well, the thing is, he, um, 
he had uh, undergone the rite of binding, and with the rite of I'm sorry, rite of bonding, and uh, uh, you know, so is he a bit young for that? Yeah. <laughs> um, he uh, and so obviously uh, he is no longer with us, as it were. Well, sort of. You, you, you understand, of course. She sort of like you know motions to Will's character. I say I'm. I've lived most of my life away from Elven society. It's been a while. The the, the rituals have changed somewhat. What? <laughs> What exactly so as, does as this is going on, I'll sort of like say to what, what's she saying? I, I give me a moment and I'll decipher her, <laughs> um, her message. I'll, I'll look. I'll look frustrated. <laughs> you yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so you. actually, so what I'll do is um, <laughs> I'll I'll sort of step back a little bit and with and speak to the Elven archer who seems to be able to speak both common and elvish as well and say to her what's what what are they saying well it seems that he um he undergone the uh the rite of uh, bonding it's a uh it's an ancient tradition of our people whereby um when they pass uh from this world they are joined uh, back into the weave as it were, and, and um, many are ascetic, ascetics who spend sort of like their whole life uh, preparing for the moment of transition, and we refer to that as, as the rite of bonding, whereby, um, you know, there's a passing over from this life to the next, and um, by maintaining a sort of consciousness throughout that process, then they become part of the weave yet maintain some aspect of their identity uh it's very uh, i'm not an ex that's my understanding of it uh Lithuithel would know much better in you know the, the details that's the her kind of you know domain i guess what i mean well while i'm just talking to uh the the see about this i'll sort of say but, but why would the human child take part in this and is, is that even possible uh yes well that's the thing see my um our, uh, well, the head of our household, his name is Thanar. Thanar is the eldest son of Imladril, and as she gestures toward the, uh, or, oh, sorry, you're talking to Imladril, I apologize. Um, <laughs> the, my eldest son, Thanor, um, you know, is, uh, is the head of the household, right? And he had, um, Gone, we had gone out myself, him, and Lithuithel had all gone out because we know of another tribe. Um, you know, they're, they're a sort of very primitive and savage people, and uh, we had heard that this child was somehow uh, we, we sensed, <clears throat> or Lithuithel did really, that there was something important about this child and there was something going on, and so that was sensed, you know, through the weave indirectly. And so we went to intervene because we feared for what might happen um, in this uh, uh, this encounter between this this child that you speak of and this other uh, sort of very brutal and savage people. Uh, we tried to talk them out of of training and preparing him for the rite of binding because we felt that it was inappropriate. Um, unfortunately. Uh, despite our best efforts, um, they refused to listen to reason, and uh, as a result, um, there was a tragic encounter where this same sort of illusion that we, you know, have encountered, like, basically it was served as a distraction while one of the shamans sort of completed that ritual, and then you, know, you can imagine what happened from there, but... Uh, I guess I, like, she's... Uh, Seer is like relating about the same information to me. So yeah, I turn, yeah, yeah. She I really turn back to the, uh, I turn back to the hunter and say, uh, "I'm sorry, <clears throat> but it doesn't seem like he is amongst us anymore. He is back in the weave." I uh, I must apologize. I wish that I had uh, um, the few things I I needed to. Before I could share this information, I had to speak 
first with uh, with Leofel. She, in in terms of authority, she has uh, a special place with regard to these matters since it is primarily a spiritual matter. Um, so I'll um, I'll turn to the Elven Archer and say, could you ask her if as you describe it, the person that is still semi-aware in the weave, is it possible that there is some sort of rite or ritual or something where we could, I could speak to them? Well, it's funny you should say that. We, we've already, um, there was another group of uh, off-worlders like yourselves, and um, they were there when all of this transpired. And uh, they had gone, separately with Thanor um, to seek out uh, a legendary um, sage. Uh, we call them the Hierophants. And these Hierophants are uh, notoriously difficult to locate. And um, this was some weeks ago that he set out um, searching for the Hierophants because um, the Hierophants, in, in fact, uh, according to Lithuithel, they were the only ones who could um, possibly uh, know a way to do what it is that you describe. I, uh, we, we do not know. We've never heard of somebody coming back once they've been uh, bound to the weave, but we are hopeful that uh, at, at the request of these other off-worlders, they wish to the same, to see him return from the weave, um, something that apparently he's fairly important, is that correct? Um, uh, not that I'm aware of, but... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, who who are these other off-worlders? I mean, when was this? Was this said, was two, two or three weeks ago, I believe. Um, they had headed more to the uh, south... Uh, Southeast, or no, sorry, southwest from here. And you uh, say they're, they're with one of your trackers at the moment? They what? They're with one of your people at the moment? Yes, well, Thanor, uh, yes, Thanor was with them. Thanor is uh, the head of, after his father, my uh, late husband passed, um, Thanor is the uh, head of our household, and uh, he was personally accompanying them uh, in their search for the Hierophant. Um, may I ask why you, I mean, I understand that your people are reluctant to um, engage with my people. So what did those people offer you or why did you decide to help them? Well, when we arrived, as you know, as I said before, we had, uh, we had felt something significant was happening um, with this other tribe and uh, the child. And uh, when we arrived, these other off-worlders, they were already there engaged in some sort of like parlay with these elves. Um, so they were sort of already in the middle of the whole thing before we arrived. Um, so we kind of didn't have much choice or way to easily get rid of them. So uh, that's kind of how they ended up in the, in the whole thing. Would, would, if we wanted to go and follow Fenar, if it, whatever his name is, if we wanted to follow his trail to find these other off welders, would you have someone who could help us? Just in uh, case. I'm, I'm, what I'll say is, I'm saying, um, I'm concerned that perhaps they mean him harm or you've been led astray, perhaps. I'd like to. It, it may be nothing. It may well be that they have the same intentions to try and save the boy as everyone else. But it could be that they have. If they were there at the original time, it was. It happened. I would be concerned that they might be part of the same cult who have been casting these illusions on us. Well, we were there when they were attacked. I mean, it would be. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but the attack from these uh, illusionists. It almost killed them. We, we saw them attacked and nearly killed just like the rest of us. So that seems unlikely. Um, and they also seem to be um, 
concerned about these people in the same way that you guys are. Now, granted, of course, that could be a rather uh, elaborate trick, but um, I don't even know. so, uh, you know, hopefully that is true that these people share the same concerns. But obviously, uh, if we were to meet up with them, a larger group of people would be better able to defend against the attack from these um, the illusion casters if we, you know, while we were looking for this hyper fan. Yes, but the problem is if you if you go and return, um, I so right now, um, and she sort of like she sort of motions for you guys to follow as she sort of he continues talking, and you guys go outside and then over another bridge and to another much smaller sort of uh, structure. <clears throat> you see like light coming from within the structure, sort of the cracks in the you know like the walls. You can see like light coming out or whatever. And um, so she sort of opens the door and you guys see, there you see um, the figure that, that we just showed a picture of, uh, who is Niklaus. Um, he is lying on like a bed of leaves and there's like this sort of golden aura like around his uh, unconscious or dead uh, figure, except he's not, you know, decomposed or anything like that. It says, to be honest, if you were to go as far, I don't have no idea how far away these people are right now. And if you were to go find them and return, I very much doubt that I could preserve his physical body for that long without uh, some sort of uh, uh, something bad happening is my concern. Um, so, so, which, so whose body is it that's here? The boys? The boy, yeah. If he's already, oh, so there's, in order to return from the from the weave, do they need his original body still to be intact? Well, their hope was to this other group that we had mentioned. Their their intention was to keep his body intact so that his body could be his his soul could be returned to its body. So, is there anything else that we can do to help preserve the body while we wait for the return? I, are you powerful healers or abjurers? Uh, that is my personal domain. If, if one of you were more powerful than me, then perhaps you could, uh, you know... I'll, I'll, I'll have a look around for Ambrose, but then seeing he seems to have... He, he seems to have off to be sick down the, the railings of a... <laughs> some of the railings. I, I don't believe our heal is as powerful as you are. Well, at least I would... Uh, I, I severely doubt they are. Um... Well, what, uh, who, who is this child? No one has really, I feel like these other off-worlders were not entirely forth, forthright. There was a, a hesitation or something about uh, the whole thing, and he, they seemed to not really want to share something which bothered me a bit. Um, so perhaps you can tell me more about this child. Why is he so important? Um, the child has a powerful mother. I see. Um, who who is obviously who is concerned about his welfare, uh, rightly so by the sounds of it. I see. Well, um, I mean the the the, the uh, you know the quest to find out whether his uh, soul you know can be returned to his body is something that's already sort of underway. Um, certainly, there are other hierophants, um, you know, that uh, might be you know, might be located. Um, it's not just the one that they have gone in search of. So you may consider maybe going a different direction, searching for human fans. And, um, you know, also, well, if his mother is so powerful, can't she help him? I don't understand. Human, I was under the impression that our job is to find these two scouts. Now this boy isn't one of the scouts, so I'm not paid to follow you there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wait, where are you? Uh, uh, how true, but this mission, this <clears throat> this mission, a side mission that was given directly to me by the military, is superseding our original mission. If we were to come and if we were to come into counter with a situation where we learned more about him, I say if we run into the boil and fine, but our primary mission is to look for these scouts, and then I can be done with you. Here, you say that as you kind of like 
stumble through the door yeah. quite drunk and then realize after you say it that you're looking on the corpse of someone who's the exact image of the picture that you looked at a moment ago. Oh, we found him. There we go. <laughs> yeah. done. So, um, there we go. Oh. That solves that well, one. We don't, we don't have any leads on the scouts now anyway. We lost their trail. Well, the boy's dead. <laughs> I guess our job's done then. I start drinking again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, me and Sen are like fist bump. Let's <laughs> go! <laughs> <laughs> time, time to drink. <laughs> So, uh, what do, uh, so Sydney, your character, um, you are surprised when you see this child, Sydney, because your character, um, you've not had a lot of close interaction with, uh, uh, Lady, uh, Magdalena Tresson, who I will, uh, show right now, where'd she go? Just Tresson? Um, that's a shame. Probably okay, I guess I don't have it in here. Uh, that's okay. But anyway, she is a powerful um, archmage, and uh, she is known as being very important to the government of Schlechtenburg, and is one of the main people driving the effort to call to sort of, you know, create this portal, which is then, you know, people are moving through the portal to help, you know, harvest resources from this world. Um, and, uh, this is, you've only met, you've only seen him once or twice, but because of your special connections where you sort of work closely with the military and then she has like an indirect sort of command over the military. Um, so you've seen this child before and, uh, you're like, holy shit, because this is the child of w one of the sort of rulers as it were. It's a magocracy. So there's like a council of mages. And uh, one of the mages, this is her son. Um, and you're like, whoa! <clears throat> whoa. <laughs> I know this kid. <laughs> <laughs> who is he? Who's A profound, <laughs> profound observation. <laughs> because we're not interested in the child. We found us. Can't find the scouts. Found a child. Job done, I say. Back low down. <laughs> yeah. I think there might be very negative consequences if we don't try and help the situation. Why? He is more important than you know. But why don't you explain? Because you hate machines and I just don't want to. Very well. <laughs> I, don't think, and I turn back to the party. I don't think you want to hear. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll kind of side say. So, boy is the son of a very powerful person. Um, if we were to go back without at least trying to explore options to find out more about either what happened to him or if there is any option to, you know, contact him or put him back in his body or... Well, if he's dead, know. isn't the problem solved? You're the... It, it seems as if the, the elves here believe that there is a way to... you for these hyperfat people to reverse the process and place him back in his body. And that would be bad? Yeah. Well, no, that's what I'm that's, saying. That would yeah. be good. What's wrong with him being dead? Look, he's fine. <laughs> he's, he's great for being dead. You keep talking about these dire consequences, but you have no idea what they are, apparently. <laughs> he's more important than you know. Well, you don't seem to know what on earth is wrong with him being dead. So there is a risk that... Ah, here we go. The... There is another faction who are likely to try and use the fact that if the boy died here by the hands of the elves or by any the hands of anyone from this side, they would push an agenda that would be much more violent than the current agenda. Mm, who is this uh, organisation then? I don't know the specifics, but that's what I was told firsthand. So by the boy's mother. So the, the so, problem would be someone could say the elves murdered the boy. Let's kill the elves. Yes. 
<laughs> the resounding yes yeah. from everyone. And it, would be, it would be a full scale war, not scouting parties and random hits. It would be airships yeah. dropping bombs, scouring the forest, burning it to the ground. So, Sydney, your character knows something about this. When this is mentioned, it sort of jogs your memory. When you were in the sort of R&D department for research and development of weapons back in Schlechtenberg, um, <clears throat> something that came across like as a, a sort of like executive order um, just before, it's like sort of the last thing that happened before you departed for this world, um, which was essentially like there was a call for a greatly expanded, like a, a huge expansion of the weaponized uh, R&D portion of this company that you work for. The company is called uh, Blofeld Arm and Arms and Armaments, and um, they manufacture weapons, and uh, this is something that happened like right before you left. Um, so you didn't really get to see much in detail. You only know that they had decided to greatly expand. <clears throat> So I'll um, I'll sort of say to the the elven archer woman, feel free to relay this to the the, the seer woman. The people that I used to work with are already prepared to start a full on so war. So your people are doing this. The people that are I know to kill us. Excellent. So we've led one into our camp. It seems they're not machines. Why? I'm not sure I believe it at all. The only reason I have one is because I was hurt when I was with them. So they turned you into this? To save me. Oh, well, is it any kind of life, really? Um, yeah. I look, sad. I was I look gonna... sadly at you. <laughs> well. So the machine people are deciding that because the boy died here, they're going to start a war because they're a warlike people and they want war. No, seen. what we're saying is that could be one possible consequence of us not being able to find out what really happened here. Well, who's to say if we do find out that they're going to believe us? Because they are disgusting machines, after all. <laughs> they don't listen his, to his, his, his mother's His mother's a very powerful woman. Um, Provided we can get some evidence of what has happened, she will make sure that um, the right outcome is happens. They do understand logic and reason better than some. I beg to differ. From what I've seen from you, it's been most illogical. For instance, <laughs> fighting random creatures that don't exist. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Quite. That is that is my point exactly. Now, <laughs> what evidence possibly can we find? And if we were to go looking for it, where would we go? Well, it would be interesting to know why the boy came through here and um, went to see this other group of elves who helped him with this ritual in the first place. That's not just something someone would randomly, certainly not from our world, would randomly discover or want to do. So it would be interesting to know why he did that, what led him to that path. There is the chance that we could, if we could find one of these hierophants, we could either get a message from him directly or even return him back to his body and then escort him back through, which would obviously be the ideal outcome. But if not, perhaps we could even just get a message from him if he's in the weave. We could talk to him in the weave and we could at least find out what happened. We would be able to relay that to his mother. I suppose we should find this Hierophant then. Do we have any idea where to start looking? <coughs> well, it sounds like the elves have already sent one party looking for one Hierophant. So I guess the question is, do we do we follow that party <coughs> and try and find them? Or as the, um, the, the other elves have suggested here, that there may well be more Hierophants. Do we... Do we go looking for a different one uh, in the hope that one of the two groups locates a hierophant in time before the boy's bodies? I say we split uh, up. The, the more ground we can cover, <laughs> the more likely we find one, I suppose. 
Yeah, so I'll turn to the to the Asher and say, so do do you have any leads that could help us to the location of a of another Hierophant? Is there maybe a um, you know a competent Elven scout that you could give us to to help us find one? Well, I. Uh... I mean, yes, but I say yes because the human scouts are absolutely awful. He's a zealous hunter. He hasn't been able to find anything. He said he saw <laughs> something moving behind a tree. Didn't even exist. Damn it. We need an elf in here. Someone who's actually a scout. Well, I'm I am uh, amongst my people. I am uh, probably one of the better scouts. Um, so, if necessary, I suppose I could uh, join you. However. I, I, I do have to point out one thing. Uh, Thanar went in search of... <clears throat> the Hierophants are extremely elusive, and generally speaking, um, only very, very sort of like powerful people who know things are the only ones, even then, usually they do not know uh, where the Hierophants are. So Thanar went the direction he did because he had a, a lead that one of the higher fans was in that region, and so he went searching. Um, unfortunately, I do not have any uh, spiritual power like my son does, and so I, I can't. I can only use my natural means to find them, and, and, and natural means have failed to find the higher fans for hundreds of years. So I, I want to be very clear about that. <clears throat> Is, uh, so, so, to, so, what about uh, so the the seer woman? Obviously, is is she able to give us any any lead that might help you find them when you're guiding us? Well, I can. Um, yes, I suppose before our only um, Thanos was sort of our primary uh, hope in this whole matter. So, I can um, I can work on it. Uh, it will take me some time to divine any such location. However, um, do not be surprised if uh, the Hierophants are too elusive even for me. Uh, the, the, this is like the... Yeah, so how long ago did um, the other party leave and when, when kind of were they expecting to come back? Well, the thing is the Hierophants can, you know, it's an it's a open-ended question as to how long it would take them, but they left uh, three weeks ago. So, so the boy. So, and was that roughly when the boy died? That's correct. So, how long do you think you can sustain the boy's body? Um, another month or something like that, maybe. I, I don't know. It's difficult to say, but um, I would be concerned if for past that. I, you know, it's like. <clears throat> I can't continue to preserve him indefinitely. And, uh, you know, once the, the sort of uh, length of, uh, you know, the magic sort of begins to fade, then, you know, it will, of course, begin to decompose. <clears throat> Decomposing smells. Could Ambrose do that, that, that foot heel thing? <laughs> <laughs> Can Ambrose roll a 62? <laughs> I say I feel like it would probably be disrespectful to touch the boy's body now he's dead. Do you think? <laughs> Have some respect for the dead machine. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't want to go. I don't want to go here. Uh, so at this point, there's like a lull in the conversation and, and something happens interesting. Outside of this like structure that you guys are sort of in, where the, the boy's body is, you hear, um, in addition to the normal sound of stringed instruments and that sort of thing from you know just the, the standard music that you heard before, you hear like a sort of cacophony of um, almost like birds or something like that. You think? Uh, you know, like outside, and it sounds like a like sort of a loud, you know, like when a, uh, when a flock of birds goes overhead, and you just hear this sort of deafening, you know, sound. <laughs> I uh, let's rush outside. Let's go see what that sound is. I'm bringing my beer with me. Yeah, me too. Bring your 
through here. Yeah. <laughs> so going outside, you um, you step outside and you see this one particular tree. You can't really make out what's happening, but there's people playing music, just like you've seen elsewhere. But in addition, there's like all the branches in the canopy, sort of like above the, on this particular tree. There's like they're like toucans and parrots and all this stuff, and they're like there's like a hundred or more birds that are on all of the branches of this tree. Yeah. And um, you, you see like a large crowd of people on this kind of much smaller platform. And uh, you can't really see past the crowd except for that something's going on. And for some strange reason, all the birds are hanging out there. Huh. Uh, I start <laughs> running towards the crowd, I guess. <laughs> um, Dramatically. Dramatic. <laughs> yeah. so as, you, as you near the crowd, um, you see uh, in the sort of bonfire toward the center of the group, and you sort of like, you know, elbow your way through the crowd, and you see, um, you see all of these animals, they're like, you get closer and you see that they're actually monkeys who are like in the middle of this, this circle, and there are all these people gathered around and in the center, there's like, there's this, this giant wolf that you guys recognize. And you see the same elven child that you guys saw before. And around her are like, there's monkeys, there's wolves, there's, um, you know, like small feline, small cats and stuff like that. And they all seem to be like, they're not really dancing, but it's almost like unnerving as they, they seem to almost be reacting to the music as she sort of is like making merry and dancing around mm. and these animals and it's like you get the distinct feeling that the parrots and stuff are like trying to match the the instrumental the, the musical notes of the instruments and that sort of thing <clears throat> weird. um super, super weird note to uh to i guess finish the show on as we're looking at this <laughs> I, like, I see her now <laughs> hey <laughs> She can, she can hear on one ear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so I guess we should, uh, on that bombshell, wrap up episode three of uh, The Warrior's Dawn. So thanks, Brian, for running that game. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys in chat think? What do we all think? Um, enjoy ourselves. So um, we're about to head off uh, in just a few moments here into the uh, Le Dungeon Masters workshop. I'm going to be running a kind of Roll20, kind of basic tutorial for you folks. So I know a lot of people are uh, interested in learning some, uh, some Roll20 pro skills. Uh, and um, we'll also be doing some Curse of Stroud prep and some Q&A stuff. Uh, so, um, Brian, I guess some, some hooks and plugs after hooks today's plugs. show. Hooks and plugs, hooks and uh, plugs. So, I think the uh, the long-awaited uh, <laughs> module for uh, Open Legend, the intro module of Star Wars Fallen, which uh, Will and other folks have played before, uh, should be coming out pretty soon. I've got most of the PDF done. Uh, I keep thinking any day now that it'll be the release date, so hopefully that'll be soon. Um, and uh, other than that, tomorrow night, Amaria's Dawn. You can catch the other chapter of uh, Amaria's Dawn as the... Uh, other group is exploring, and um, that's on Twitch slash uh, Open Legend RPG. And then I'm on Twitter, Open Legend RPG, and Facebook as well. So catch us there. Ask us questions if you have any questions about the game. Hopefully, you guys uh, give it a try and enjoy it. <clears throat> nice, nice. Uh, what's up, fine line, Brian? Uh, so, I uh, know it's got anything for hook or plug. All right then. <laughs> No plugs required. Uh, <laughs> come free plugged. Excellent. So uh, we're going to head off here. going to have like a two minute countdown break uh, before I get into the next show. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, I will see you folks again for Open Legend. Same time next week. See ya. See ya. And wave. Nah. <laughs> Millions.